Hey, Fairy Rays. Really How's it going? Pretty early. <laughs> you guys might want to open up my chat because we will be interacting with my chat. Yes, like, I just, just open opened it. it up. Awesome. Hey, Rarichi. How's it going? So, Kazu is eating food with her family, so she'll be with us momentarily. You have to be here, Waffle. Why do you have to be here? Explain yourself. You want to know what's really bad about how I'm doing this stream? Mm. Everyone's going to think Theo's my persona. <laughs> Hey, Dream Prince Leon, how's it going? Yeah, imagine having a transparent picture, though. I'm a box. You could <laughs> totally do a transparent picture for that character. Mm hmm. I wouldn't prepare for my. Uh, Everyone my thinks character. this is my persona! <laughs> Alright. Let me, let me explain something to you. You see this character? The character that's jumping up and down, laughing at you right now? His name is Theo. His name is not Meowkaiser. He is the stream mascot. He represents the stream. Hey, MOTF, how's it going? Why am I a box? Because I chose to be a box. Truth be told, Plessy is actually Snake. It's showtime. Hey, Beta Shikichi, how's it going? Alright, so, quick rundown. We're gonna be talking a little bit about the game. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the issues with queues. Uh, we're gonna be... I'm gonna, not specific queue time, but the queue logic. Right? I'll get into that later. We're gonna be talking about the new player experience. How we feel like players should be approaching the game. And we'll be interacting with the chat a lot. I have a... <laughs> I like how I am completely forgetting one of the topics, and I wrote it down, and I do not have that thing open, because I'm a Papega. Oh, no. It's fine. Oh, yeah. There's a ton of people that think the game's not easy to learn, and there's also a ton of people that think that if they're going to stream this game, that they have to be super good at it. This is also something that I seek to disprove, because honestly a lot more people should be streaming the game that genuinely enjoy it, and I think would be genuinely good content creators. That, you know, they should do like YouTube and stuff. You know, you don't- Oh, Kazu's here. Hi, Kazu. Hey, Kazu. Oh, so many people are going to disagree with me when I say Black Survival is an easy game to learn. And I'm ready. Okay, her mic is malfunctioning. Plus, well, you're the only one that doesn't have a transparent background. Oh, it's yeah. okay. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I choose to be a box. You choose to be a box? Also, I thought um, the two images would be the same size, but... It's fine. Uh, it's okay. I, I got the point. Mm -hmm. You can tell when you talk. <laughs> it it's a little weird though, but I choose to be a box. I'm just gonna wait for Kazu, since Kazu Sounds is good. here. Hey Fallen Devil, how's it going? I remember one time I did a little thing about how I approach strategy games, right? And this guy got so upset that I talked about how Faker approaches League of Legends. I'm like pretty sure that guy thought I was comparing myself to Faker. And that's um. why he got mad. <laughs> hey, Wizard Effects, how's it going? Hello? Testing? Hey, you're live. Hello. Okay, is it working? Alright, mm -hmm. perfect. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever? <laughs> Whatever. Um, Alrighty. Alright, everyone want to introduce themselves? Because this is going on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so right. disappointed! Alright, who wants to go first? 
Uh, I can go first. So my name is Christian Kiger. My username is very creative. It's also Christian Kiger. So it's easy to remember. And I, I am a top 100 player at the moment. I was last season as well. And I play Leon and Athpa mostly. You're like leaving out the most important thing. Alright, so and I also do content creation. I stream on Twitch as well as post weekly on YouTube. And the uh, things on YouTube are just games where I talk about my thought process as I do the games. It's uh, no voiceover, just music with captions. So that's the style I'll do there. And then for Twitch, I of course do voiceover. I definitely highly recommend Christian's videos as well. Unlike my videos, he gets to spend more time explaining his thought process, whereas I do not. All of mine stuff is done in real time, whereas his is done after the fact. And so he gets to explain more about his thought process more than I can. So definitely check him out. Uh, we'll do Plessy next since Kazu seemed to be freaking out. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I am Plessy, also known as Plessiosaur in BS Black Survival of the Immortal Souls. Um, as for content creation, I mainly do Twitch. Um, I don't really have a YouTube, although I, I mean, I have one, but I just don't really use it. Um, as for BS itself, I played since around like season four which is like around like 2018 so i am i am pretty experienced um and i've i've been top 30 of the last season and right now i am currently top two so yeah can you drop your twitch link in the chat because i don't have it saved got it let me let me get it thank you Kazu, your time to freak out. Okay. Oh man, it's like school projects all over again. Okay. Um, my name is Kazu. Um, I go by Kazuren or Kazuchi. Um, I, I guess I'm I'm a top 100 player as well, technically. You are. There is um, no technically. <laughs> I'm in there. Um, I main Arda. Um, I technically play Fior and Leon as well, but mostly Arda. Uh, in terms of content creation, I mostly stream on Twitch, and I do not have... No, I do have a YouTube, and there's... but there's no, um... I think there's like two videos on there <laughs> of like a Yuki hack or something like that. And then, um, I guess I'm an artist, yeah, so most of the time I, I draw BS art. Definitely check out Kazu's Twitter. You're gonna to have to link that stuff yourself because I'm lazy. Yeah, no worries. Um. And looks like I have a couple new people in here. So, hello, I am Meow Kaiser. I am the person that most people find out first when they search on YouTube Black Survival. I am currently top ten. Well, technically, I'm ninth place. I have no intention of holding that though. I mostly play this game to enjoy it. Hitting the high ranks kind of just came with the sheer amount of time I played this game. <laughs> it's just kind of a thing that happens. Uh, and quite frankly, it can happen to a lot of people. It happened to Kazu too. She ended up in top 100 just because she likes playing the game. The game doesn't have a large enough of a player base where, like, you have to be super serious about being competitive to hit the top ranks in this game. It's just not big enough. And because of that, uh, the barrier to entry for top 100 is fairly low. And honestly, I think that's okay. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I think it's, oh, I think it's fine. I know after the server split, I feel like a lot of the, the controversy was kind of resolved. That it's it's like all it's split now. So like if you want top one hundred, you you can get it if you if you play and if you enjoy the game. I think my favorite thing was like a lot of the controversy was solved after a lot of the Korean players VPN themselves to North America and found themselves oh, losing. God! They're just insisting on making you subs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
I it's appreciate more of anonymous it. gifters. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, let's not forget to follow Meow at twitch.tv. That's a Twitter meow. link. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a Twitch link. <gasps> well, go follow him there too then. There it is. The thing is, I know that they're using anonymous gifter so that they can maintain the 69 gifted subs. Oh, that, that's exactly what it is. That is true. Uh, <laughs> well, way, to, way to out them. <laughs> I am going to out them because that's what I do on my stream. I out my chat. Oh. Well, well, thank you, an anonymous gifter. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, this uh, mysterious gifter, for <laughs> giving us subscriptions all the meow. We got an Eternal Return follower here. <laughs> I actually... Let, let's talk about Eternal Return a little bit. I like how a lot of people discovered this game after they checked out Eternal Return. And granted, a lot of those people are like, well, this game's not for me. Because a lot of people that checked out Eternal Return are fans of the MOBA genre. But... I would... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. But a lot of them, all, the amount of times I go onto there and they're like, Meow, why don't you play Eternal Return? And I'm like, I don't like MOBAs. And they're like, I don't also. You should play anyways. And I'm like, why would you do this to yourself? Why would you hurt yourself like this? I'm one of those, so <laughs> I can't defend them. Um... You're an artisan. You have a reason. <laughs> Art is not even in Arps. Uh, he will be. And you, you have to be good enough to get the skins. <laughs> Once he's there. Yeah, I hope Nimble Neuron's listening here. You better put her in this damn game soon. But okay, uh, but I would say in terms of herbs and oh, I'm sorry, they now call it Eternal Return only. Um, Many Mortal Soul. It's actually kind of a, a two-way street. Like just the other day, I had some um, Eternal Return players being like, "Oh yeah, I'm really interested. I'm learning how to play Immortal Soul." Um, like I've had quite a few that have started playing. Um, Immortal Soul because they didn't realize there was an original game and then they saw their waifu and they're like oh my god waifus have so many skins and then they <laughs> they come running over um guess the mobile life is not quite for them as well but they started playing because they were interested and then now they can find Immortal Soul as a alternative I guess <laughs> this is kind of a, a general advice to you content creators out there uh if you're streaming Black Survival and you're looking for people to network with I mean, obviously, there's me, there's Kazu, there's these guys. You should also be networking with the people in the Eternal Return audience. They know about this game. And for those that don't, they're genuinely going to be interested when they see a game that uses the same character from a game they really like. So definitely reach out to them. Uh, actually, the other day, I got one of them, by, a player by the name Superior. He's the number one NA SUA player. Ooh. And... Really? He, you got Superior 1? I got wow. I got Superior 1 to play the game, and the first thing he did was he skipped the tutorial, and then he was like, this game's not new player friendly. I'm like, dude, you skipped the tutorial! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. He, he didn't even let me give him a rundown on how the game's different. What a guy. It, it was pretty funny. But he, he ended up enjoying the game. Which is pretty cool, because, you know, it's a very different game. It's nice. Definitely reach out to the Eternal Return folks. A lot of them are interested. Appyput has been playing ERBS for a long time. This is, this is old news. Yeah, the tutorial for Black Survival can definitely be better, uh, but it's a step in the right direction, 100%. One, I think the biggest complaint that I have with the tutorial in its current state is that it is only designed for mobile, right? So you won't be aware that there are hotkey settings. And also the pacing of the tutorial is extremely slow. Like there's a lot of times where you can, you should just be able to click on things, but it doesn't let you. It just waits for like the small text to like fill out when like, if you already know what's going on, you should just be able to spam click through it. I, I think tutorials are 
It's a bit of a work in progress for both games. Sorry, like Eternal Return did a revamp of it. Uh, Immortal Soul did a revamp of it. First, they were sort of focusing on, um, I guess, it's language issues, <laughs> let's say. And then um, they're the translations has a lot to yeah. be desired for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was avoiding saying that, but all right. Um, uh, but yeah, they they sort of improved on the language, and I, I think it, I think it's getting better because they they've definitely heard the complaints of um, uh, the tutorial not being very helpful or uh, convoluted, confusing all around. What I found. Um, yeah, go on. What I found interesting was that uh, Boltrend did approach me about doing a proofreading of the tutorial in a later stage. They haven't actually given me the text yet. So it's going to be like where I proofread a bunch of the items, right? And also how Hofua got its new name. <laughs> did I tell you that uh, they that they actually said that I had translated Hofua wrong and I had to show them exactly where it came from? Oh, you mean the, the sword? Yeah. It's actually oh. pronounced Hovid, but that's the that's yeah. the spelling. Well, I mean, as long as it's, it's in a constant um, state of improvement, right? So <laughs> I'm glad that they're putting in the effort to uh, work on it, improve it, constantly creating new content, right? Like for us, I would say probably the biggest change they put in PVE. That's a pretty big jump from what we had. What was it like five years ago? <laughs> Um, team match, stuff like that, right? Yeah, the PvE mode is great for learning a lot of the crafting recipes just because that's what it tests you on, right? Like, in the other modes, like, especially because, like, when you play normals, and technically I should keep this a secret, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, when you play normals in Herbivore, you're going to be matched up against bots because there's just not enough new players, right? And what's going to happen is a lot of times players will just find out that they can just build a weapon and win the game. Which is not what happens <laughs> when you play the actual game. So, the... I can't think. The PvE mode actually gives a lot of improvements on that where it allows people to focus more on their armor building and it helps them improve as players. I, I mean, if you're speaking on that, then I think uh, team matches really sort of <laughs> forces you to know many recipes. Um, and I guess the only thing is the locations might be a little bit different. But definitely, like, because I play Bo, I don't think I've never ever made Zephyrus so many times in my life until I started playing <laughs> like team match. Because you never make it in normal. Like you never you really make it don't. in a normal match. You're like, why would I use my tree of life for something like this? Unless you're really forced to. I think I've done it <laughs> twice in my ranked games. Yeah, I've done it maybe like when I'm desperate. <laughs> I don't think but I have it, ever made that weapon. Right. In, in a team match, game. it's it's the main weapon you make as a bow like you, you you only make that one it's the strongest it's the fastest um you start off at that area and that's it so like it sort of gives you the chance to explore many different items that you might not have because a lot of people in normals um especially lower levels they stick to one path they stick to one set of items and then they they just don't explore any other options right they just <laughs> also yeah stamina wins right um Stamina and oh God, stamina and team match is no issue at all. But I, I don't know. It just gives you sort of the chance to do a lot of different things than you would ever have in your uh, normal matches. Hey, our Jinx. Is that Sua holding a gun? That is Sua holding I a gun. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. I think another thing that PvE does, that, te that teaches you, that areas are going to restrict. I mean, the, the areas in PvE, they don't restrict, but you only have a set amount of areas to work with, right? And as games go on and rent games, your areas are going to close. So if you need to still make a backup weapon, like if your weapon defects or breaks, you need it will help you like know, okay, with this area is open, I can make this weapon. So I think that's something nice that PvE does with... How it limits you on 
a few areas that you can craft into. One of the things that uh, Nimble Neuron was criticized on for uh, the new player experience was that it does the tutorials, nothing teaches about flexibility, right? And so a lot of people's natural instinct was to, you know, look up very specific routes, you know, for specific characters, which unfortunately just isn't the way this game is played. Now, I can give you a route. There are people that will give you routes. Uh, my personal experience with giving new players roots is that they follow it like a bible right they do nothing but that they don't explore anything else uh the way that pve is randomized and how you get these different areas you're put into a situation where you have enough time to look at where what different items are in different areas before you choose where to go and so it teaches you that flexibility without having the pressure of a real match happening. Mm -hmm. Which is incredibly valuable. The way that you had to do it before was you had to theory craft roots, which is one of the things that I actually did recommend to people. I always recommend to people, you know, write down your own roots, write down different pathing and different ways to path out of a single area. Because you could argue that the top players in this game could write 20 roots out of any starting zone. Would all of them be viable? No, but they, they could do it. They could, they could make something work, yeah. Yeah. I mean, flexibility is the most important, right? So that's... I think that sort of separates the newer players from people who have experience, right? So no matter how many times you're kicked out of other zones, you still have options. You still know what to do um, with what you have. And then you try your best to make it work. Um, whereas... Like, especially a lot of newer players, when you talk to them, they're like, oh, once I get kicked out of uh, the Temple Start or whatever, I, I'm done for the game. Like, I don't know what to do anymore. I, I might as well just quit. Which, <laughs> the, that won't get you very far in, like, ranked matches higher up, right? But... The thing about Black Survival as a game, there's a lot of randomness that goes into any given match, right? And, and before, I mean, I've said this before. Uh, when I make decisions in this game, I am always wrong, and I am okay with that. And you need to recognize that you're not going to be able to make the right decision every time you are given a decision. There are infinitely many decision trees in any single game of Black Survival, and there's a lot of information you don't know. You don't know if you're going to get RNG screwed. You don't know if somebody is going to come across you and they're going to happen to be a lot luckier than you. You don't know if somebody is just going to get like six kills out of the blue and suddenly they're stupidly strong. And then like the right decision from that point is to literally just, you know, make a bunch of food, make adrenaline drink and pray, right? But yeah. what separates like the good players from like the best players is how they always play to their outs, right? I'll always look for like, okay, well, what can I do to win the game from here? And this is something that you need to get into the mindset of. If you're, if you, I mean, you, you said this earlier when like people get knocked out of their route, they're like, oh, I'm done. I'm, I lose. You've already identified one thing that is making you lose. That is their next point of improvement, right? It's trying to learn, okay, I get kicked out of this. What do I do? And so that's where we kind of get back to theory crafting your own roots uh, and doing the PVE mode. Yeah, I mean, a lot of um, a lot of people early on, especially people who come from uh, herbs too, they're all very uh, <laughs> and they're like, "What route should I do?" Because it's such a it's such a heavy focus in herbs. Like you have a set route, you have to go and get these materials. And a lot of people they'll come in they're like okay which weapon is best on which character what route do i need like exactly which item should i make on each character but is this has oops, sorry immortal soul <laughs> is this <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh it's a bad habit um but immortal soul has just so much flexibility compared to uh, where like when they're like oh which um on on like Nikki, which fist item should I make? I'm like, technically, you can make almost any of them, right? <laughs> like, if you if you get kicked off of one, obviously there's some items that might be a little better, but you don't have to go for that specific item. You can have other options and still do just as well. Um, and I, I think 
some players have like a really hard time wrapping their head around that concept like the fact that they can actually do anything basically um even if they felt like they can go another mastery if they really really wanted to although and ends uh, sort of curbing that down a little bit but um hopefully maybe one day we'll get all of them back but who knows <laughs> I still can't get over how often I get the question, you can play a character with any master? I'm like, you technically can. Will you win? Probably not. <laughs> oh, Mel, how do you answer this question of what is the meta or, like, who's the best character in ISBS? It's actually, so, it's a trap question, and especially for top content creators. Uh, here's the problem with it, and if I answer you truthfully... Right? Like, who who here remembers the ROTC meta? I assume you all remember the ROTC meta. Yeah. Yep. If I answer ROTC during the ROTC meta, people will get all kinds of mad at me. Right? If I tell you the truth that the meta doesn't matter until the highest level, because it doesn't, this game tests how much knowledge you have of the game, and only when it comes to the point where people have a very large amount of knowledge of the game does the meta actually matter. People get mad at that too, because then they call me elitist. If yeah. I tell you, don't play this character because they're bad, people will get mad at me for that too. Unfortunately, the only answer is play whatever character you find interesting or you think is cool, and if you like get further along into your learning of the game and you ask me the question again, I can give you a more serious answer. Just play for your waifu. Just just go by face that <laughs> like I think face that's most important, but uh, a lot of it like for sure it, it doesn't really matter until you're at the higher end when it's all about numbers at that point, right? Like everybody is playing at sort of the same skill level and then at the end it's just stat checking almost kind of um or, or rng a lot of it's luck too but um i think for the majority of the game just play whoever you want and then you don't have to play the same character over and over again i shouldn't be the one saying that honestly but like you can, you can definitely play. feel free i played young Lu for well, two years straight and there is merit to that uh, if you're very serious about trying to hit the top ranks as soon as possible so you can play in higher level lobbies or at least be competitive in them, because let's face it, there's people that look at high level lobbies, think that's really cool and want to do that too. If that's what your goal is and you've identified that as your goal, the benefit of playing one character is that you're eliminating a lot of different knowledge you need to pick up on the game. You're eliminating needing to know a lot of different uh, recipes because you don't need to learn all those other weapons. And you can just focus on learning that one character very well. And that'll accelerate you to play at a higher level if that is your goal. If you're just kind of just enjoying the game, then, you know, just do whatever you want to do. Time when I shouldn't be offering my opinion on that. <laughs> I think Kazu disagrees with me. <laughs> no, no, I fully agree. I just, I, I definitely... Making a comment right now. <laughs> exactly. But, like with uh, I remember when I was like climbing for the first time, I was like getting like around a fifteen to twenty percent win rate, and this was on like pretty much any character. This was like after I finished uh hard maining Hyun Woo. Now that I'm like on the top of the leaderboard. Uh, the, the win rate discrepancies between characters are, you, you're starting to see them. Like, Eshion, for example, has an 83% win rate. My Camillo has a 100% win rate out of seven games. Uh, and then I have other characters that have 60% win rates. And you begin to see the, ma the meta beginning to matter at that level. But before then, I just didn't see it at all. Not unless, like, a character was, like, obnoxiously broken. Oh yeah, don't one trick a root. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. One tricking a character is fine. Maybe maybe have some flexibility in the route, at least. One of the ways that I learned flexibility really early on in Hyunwoo was I was literally starting everywhere. Right? Like I was starting factory, I was starting docks, I was starting chapel, I was starting beach. Like people were all kinds of confused. I remember Kazu messaged me after one I mean not Kazu. Nocti messaged me after one game. I was like, why did you start Hyunwoo Tunnel? 
I'm like, because I felt like it. But the benefit I got out of that situation was that I was able to learn where items are very quickly. And you, I, I also highly recommend just experiment a lot. You know, it is okay to lose. You're going to lose a lot when you're trying to learn the game. And especially in a Battle Royale game where a 10% win rate is considered good. You should be very comfortable with losing and use the fact that, well, if I'm going to lose my first few games anyways, I may as well just try out things and see what works and see what doesn't. You'll become a stronger player in the long run by doing it. Nice! Did, did you really just raid me? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice raid. Nice raid. <laughs> nice raid. Yeah, while well, I'm offline, right? It's all it. I... I'm like, I am <laughs> <laughs> <Calm> down. Okay. <laughs> No, it shows up. No, everyone saw that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I made mistakes. <laughs> Hello. Chat spam, yeah, Kazuri. Right. Oh my god. I'm not even online. That's fine. Let's um, go. You didn't see that. No, no, no. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to host. <laughs> well, I mean, you're hosting me now. Exactly. That was the only way I knew how. So I was you like, could type slash host. And then type me out, Kaiser. And so slash raid. Yeah, I'm a streamer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> sorry, right in the middle of your, your speech, too. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. It was the perfect time. I completely forgot what I was talking about. That was so funny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Raiding is better, it's way more violent. I mean, raiding is more on. active than hosting. Off topic. Well, yeah. I mean, it's good. It's good. I mean, we should also promote um, Team BS, considering all four of us are. That's right. One of the three gems by playing Black Survival joins Team yeah. BS now. Oh, by wow. By clicking this link. I don't have the link, but. I can get it. Oh, but I? basically, I think, I think I'm gonna leave it to now. Basically, Team Black Survival is a streamer support program. So if you stream the game, if you make YouTube videos, you can get free gems for the game. And uh, this really does help with the fact that the skins in this game are absurdly nice. priced. Everyone is hosting and raiding me now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, sorry. I should have figured out how to do it. should have asked them quietly in the back. Alright, so this is the link if you want to join the program. Now... One of the first things that I get when I encourage people to join this program, they always say, I'm not good at the game. You know, nobody watches me. That doesn't matter. And yeah, when I first I started playing this game, nice. I, I, I'm getting hosted by everyone. Cool. <laughs> when I first started playing this game, I was in horse. I was streaming the game. I had eight viewers. Uh, the, the, the community around this game is really nice. Just stream the game. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be good. Being good is not part of the requirements to be part of Team BS. <laughs> In fact, having having viewers isn't really part of the requirements to have Team BS. So don't be worried if nobody's like, if there's like one person watching you. That's not a big deal. Um, I started streaming because I am very poor and I want gems. And I was streaming on my phone at the time because we didn't have... Uh, oh yeah, this game used to be only mobile. Like we didn't even have Steam for this. Um, and then I was streaming on my phone using a streaming app I found for free, and it would play ads every two minutes in the middle of the game. And I was like, you know what? This is fine. I'm, I'm still gonna do it. And Team BS accepted me still. So like, if they can accept me while I was doing that, then I I think anybody can join at this point. You um, need like 10, 10 hours a month. Um, and what else is the requirement? Yeah, 10 hours a month. Oh, you must be on mic. That's the only thing. No silent streaming. Um, you do have to be on mic for it. Um, you don't have to be constantly on the mic, but you do have to be speaking for a good period of time. Um, someone's asking about, do you want to address this meow? You might be a little bit <laughs> more adept on this one. You can um, do either or. Uh, stream on Twitch or post YouTube. The thing about YouTube is it has to be either mic on or subtitles if you're not using a mic. 
I believe it's that, two videos or something like that. You have to have two videos, videos, a, videos month. a month minimum to get points. Yep. And I believe it caps out at five videos. So they're, they're not trying to kill you with YouTube content creation. That's not what they're trying to do. They're just trying to get you started. And honestly, if you're really interested in doing content creation, you know, the best thing to do is to just start. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. A lot of things aren't going to work. Uh, I've been, I started streaming all the way back in 2013. Uh, <laughs> just to give you an idea of like how far I've been, how much I've learned and where I've grown from there, you know. I learned that, you know, starting by streaming if you want to start an audience is the worst thing you can do. You want to start somewhere else other than Twitch. You want to start on YouTube, you want to start on Twitter, you want to start on Instagram, TikTok, anywhere but Twitch. TikTok, and then you move people to TikTok Twitch. TikTok streaming, oh boy. <laughs> I did not play this game in 2013, I started streaming in 2013. I was a competitive Hearthstone player, I was... Top 100 in North America for Hearthstone. I competed in tournaments. I got no viewers. Nobody cared about watching me because they didn't know who I was and they didn't know how to find me and nobody could find me because I wasn't doing YouTube. I wasn't doing anything other than Twitch. Yeah, I mean, we were speaking a lot about numbers, but I honestly, if, if you're just doing it as a hobby, you're not trying to look into serious content creation. Well, the, my um, advice was specifically to people that bad. are serious yeah. about it. Like, if, you, if you're not serious about it, just do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. I love how many people get upset at TikTok. I have a TikTok. I'm okay without that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I mean, let us know when you start doing BS TikTok content. I'm not doing so BS TikTok. I'm doing other TikToks because I'm like, what do I even put BS related on TikTok? If somebody figures that out, please let me know because I would love to do BS content on TikTok. I can't figure anything out. Just put a flashy song in the background, add some filters, and then just post your gameplay. I just put horror um, stuff on there <laughs> from horror games. I mean, BS is a horror according to the tags, so... Pichu, five viewers is something to be proud of. Uh, most people can't even get two. It's true. It's true. Like, um, although, I will say, for the BS community, because we're such a small community, like, there's such a small, like, a limited amount of people to watch. In general, if you do stream BS, you shouldn't be too scared. Like, you'll, you'll definitely get people to come watch you. <laughs> um, we don't have much else to watch sometimes, <laughs> so like you're always going to check out new streams. Um, anybody who's playing the game, we have our eyes peeled for them, um, regardless of your language too. I'm also constantly rating BS streamers, so like if you stream enough, I will probably end up rating you at some point, unless your like video quality absolutely sucks. The thing is that there's not really many English BS streamers. It's mainly right. like. Korean or Japanese or something. Along I think I think that. we're among the top. We're like the top four or five people. It's it's, like the most we're all here. <laughs> like yeah, literally we're all, all here. here. This is it. The top this is this is all we got for the English streaming. <laughs> yeah, this, this is it. This is the English. I mean, you know, kick us off. Kick us off the top four. Start streaming on TBS. Anybody can do it. <laughs> bring, us, bring us more English streamers. Yeah, we, we need uh, we need more content on the Western side for sure. Um, there's a lot of Korean streamers, Japanese streamers, Chinese streamers, but we always welcome more in general. There's currently um, a market for black a Black Survival YouTube channel where it's just like different routes out of different ideas. Now, obviously, I'll probably end up doing that video at some point, but you could totally just beat me to it and I won't complain. <laughs> you know, just like pick a location, be like Lighthouse, and then just like start talking about different ways to start out of there. It would be a really, really handy guide. I'm gonna do that one day. Just pick a character and then spin a wheel of a random area and then that's where I'm gonna start. For like a minute. That sounds like a fun podcast idea where we just like run a wheel of like an area and a character and then you just have to make a route out of that area. <laughs> that, that, that would be fun. We'll have to do it sometime. It'll also show the difference between how we think. <laughs> How did you get that username? How did you get hospital underscore? Explain yourself. Mm. No. I've been followed by somebody with hospital underscore. 
Congratulations. You now have the medical community at your back. <laughs> the entire medical community. It's the entire are the medical community. <laughs> they are all following you now, Meow. Um, whole area. I got the whole yeah. ass hospital following me. They're going to p supply me with five pills. I forget how many bandages spawned there. And they're going to give me all the scrolls of the dong. I, I want the searing palm scroll. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the scroll. <laughs> Should I be trying to learn all mastery character slash or what's a good strategy to not burn out and feel defeated when I get bodied each game? Ooh, burnout, rank burnouts. Uh, that's a that's an entirely different topic than what you're asking for. So the first thing you're asking for, I'm assuming I'm assuming you want to get better, in which case you should focus on one mastery. Right? I assume that's what you want. You can focus on one character if that's what you feel like, but in general you should be focusing on one mastery if you want to get better. Now, when it comes to burnouts, everyone experiences burnout. I experience burnout. Uh, it's the reason why you tend to not usually see me stream this game for more than two to three hours. Take a break. Heck, even if you're streaming, like, just say, hey, I'm going to go on a lunch break. Take, like, a 10, 20-minute break and get yourself something to drink. Go do something. This yes, doing anything <laughs> for multiple hours in a day is going to be exhausting. I don't care how much you enjoy it. Like, freaking XQC doing 10-hour streams. Like, he practically takes crack to do it. And that applies to almost every game, right? Like, tilt queuing and playing. Like, you, you gotta take a break. <laughs> you gotta go outside for a uh, bit. If you I want... I also want to add... I, I want to add something. Um, So, when you're playing games and you're getting bodied every game, make sure you know, like, the reason why you're losing. Like, it could be, like, if you're behind in mastery or if you're like low on fruit or something just like keep that in mind because that's a good way to improve as well to add to that you should try avoiding saying i lost because of bad luck as much as possible uh obviously sometimes you might have I genuinely lost because of bad luck that happens but you there's very little you can do to improve your luck Right? So it's better to try to focus on other things. You can say, oh, you know, maybe I could have done this and I could have survived a little bit longer. Or maybe they could have ran out of food if I had done this, you know. Start trying to identify your ways of winning. And, oh, I see Kazu just... <laughs> Kazu, interesting. <laughs> no, no comments on it. Yo. <laughs> I, I, I got so distracted. <laughs> but, yeah. No I realize I have the most inefficient pathing. Maybe you should start doing more theory crafting outside of games. Most aggressive fight patterns. Are you like taking fights where you're like 20 damage down? Is that what's going on here? Is this what we're doing? Are, are we just taking fights where we're down 20, 40 damage and we're saying this is fine. We're just going to keep trading. But oh my God. Yeah, I think, I think there's, there's other things that you need to consider. Um, I think something that people need to learn is definitely when to pick fights. <laughs> um, being the most aggressive doesn't doesn't always work out for you, and that might be why. You, I don't think it has to do with your inefficient pathing. Um, you need to know when to fight. You should watch top level korean players play because their metas are very well developed uh, i used to play in that meta and so i actually know how it works and one of the things that you'll notice people run away from fights a lot in high level korean lobbies and it's because they are able to almost instantly identify i do not win this fight ever and you'll actually see this in my stream where i'll hit somebody once they haven't even had a chance to hit me back and i'm already out of there because i'm like i don't want to trade against this guy they already have like five to six armor pieces completed i got three or e even more amusing i hit a bianca i'm like i never win this trade and i just leave you the faster you can identify that a trade is bad and get out the more hp you save and the more HP you save means that you have more HP to convert into mastery on a better trade. You're constantly looking for better trades as you play the game. Fuck Spy Umbrella. Fuck you and everything you stand for. <laughs> but Spy Umbrella, you use Spy Umbrella to win every single fight early game. <laughs> That's why it's so good in Korea! Oh boy. So like... 
one of the things about mastery gaining is that you want to be doing it as efficiently as possible. And the amount of times that I will take a trade where I am losing on damage is literally because my inventory is full of food and I want to spend it. Right? Like, if my inventory is so clogged full of food that I cannot efficiently make my armor, I have to take fights. That is, like, the only time I will take bad trades. Because at that point, I would much rather take a bad trade than to drop it on the ground. Poison bow. Yeah. Look. Don't encourage <laughs> Nimble Neuron. Don't do this to me. No. No. Give me. <laughs> okay. I do not need... Okay. And Arda dealing 28 skill damage from poison, and then an additional 15 skill damage. Listen, <laughs> it's not about what you bow. need. It's, yeah, it's not about what you need. It's about what I want. Okay. It's not what the community needs either. It's not just me. Just take your mithril bow and meteorite bows. That's all you need. Well, you know what? Give me mithril. Give me meteorite. Make it a bow weapon finally. But they're not. I don't know why that's that, not so a thing. Honestly. Bow. Man, meteorite. Him. Mithril is so useless for folks. Oh wait, no, isn't that the case for gun too? I actually think that's part of the design of gun and bow, is the fact that because they uh, defect at a lower chance, that they don't- they aren't given that. Didn't they get rid of that though? The defect thing? At a lower chance? It's still a lower chance, because it's still 1% uh, after you get the minus 2. I mean, we can't even use, like, meteor still steel on a bow. I don't, I don't think... Yeah, you yeah, can you use can. meteors. You can, can use meteor steel on a bow. You can use it on any weapon. I use it on well, gun all the time. Well, you can't use it on throw, but... Well, you can't yeah, use it on throw. You can't use... Huh. I like how you didn't know this. I just make Kundal up. <laughs> I mean, you play Arda. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. Wasted on Kundala that. Kundala <laughs> is stupidly good on Arda. Oh, I know. My boy needs his earrings. Although most of the time I end up just making Moonlight Pendants. Because I don't get offered the Mithril and I cry. Throw Defect win. So we're going to Defect the throw in weapon that we just threw at them. And because it's out of our inventory, we basically didn't Defect. Does that make sense? We're like weapon breaking every single thrown weapon. Maybe you could... Pick it up again? <laughs> no, we yeet it at them so hard, it just breaks on their face. Like when we yeet the TV. Yeet. That's true, Eva. Eva. Well, no, that's not That's not true for Eva. Eva doesn't use throw weapons. Throw mastery, but it's not throw weapons. It's treated as throw damage, just for like yeah. the sake of like counter armor. But it is still melee. Like she even yeah. has the melee defect, right? That's silly. Imagine if she had the you... range defect rate. Yeah. I was like, why can't you use a bow on Eva? I don't understand. Technically, you can use a bow as a blunt. Really. If you really felt like it. And same with a gun. On the topic of Alex, I found out the other day that he was named after the creator of Tetris. And I'm, like, very disappointed that I didn't know this. Yeah. I mean, he likes Tetris. He's Russian. What else are you going to name <laughs> Yeah, the creator of Tetris, his name is Alexei Pajitnov. Mm -hmm. it, it is a direct reference, and I just never knew this. And like, now my chat's roasting me. But I, I sent it to Nocti, and Nocti just laughed at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually play a lot of that Tetris is. too. Oh my god, everyone's judging. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to be fair, I didn't know either, but I don't play a lot of Tetris. You play so Puyo really. Puyo. Do you know the creator of Puyo Puyo? No. Exactly! Leave me alone! Yeah, I don't... I don't... I don't know that... I don't think Puyo Puyo is the creator of equating to... It's equatable. They're in the same game. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Well, we all learn new things every day, I guess. I definitely don't know the creator of BS. I'm cancelled. But weren't you saying the other day your uncle works for BS? Just like my father. Hey listen, just because my uncle works for BS doesn't mean that I know who created BS. All of us have family members in BS. I'm sure we do. Obviously. 
I like how people think that Aesop created BS. I'm like... <laughs> Aesop... I mean, he has a voice line now. He has voice lines in the game. Not, not is biz. He has it in Eternal Return, though. I also like how they got Lily Pichu to voice act Eleven in Eternal Return. That's true. Um, Bianca came out recently on the topic of Eternal Return. Sorry, but and she's not trash note. in that game. Oh my god, she's really annoying. But that's not the point. Her voice sounds a lot like Eleven to me in that game. I don't know if it really is Lily Pichu again, but it not could be really close. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny, like, a, a lot of the uh, Eternal Return streamers will ask me about Bianca in Black Survival. I was like, yeah, she's trash in this game. I know she's OP in your game. I think, I think it's different game style, so it half depends on the people playing it. But, yeah, she's... Oh my god. Well, the problem when she with... came out, there's like nine in every lobby. <laughs> The problem with Black Survival, it's all about a number check, and the numbers for Bianca are just atrocious. Like, literally, all they'd have to do is just give her higher numbers, and then all of a sudden, she'll be competitively viable. But they just don't seem to want to do it. The problem with Bianca is that she's a low-level uh, noob stomper, right? It's very hard for low-level players to get SS Mastery, but it's not as hard for them to get level 18. And so because of this, they're able to get to the max damage of Bianca, whereas they're not actually able to get to the max damage of any other character. And so they don't ever see Bianca getting outscaled. And so Bianca does really well in low-level lobbies, and that's just kind of always been the problem with Bianca and how she's designed. Like, if you put Bianca in a state where she's, like, decently strong... You know she's going to be overpowered in low-level lobbies. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have these low-level players that are just going to spam Bianca because she's overpowered in low-level lobbies. And then they get to higher-level lobbies and be like, why am I losing all of a sudden? That's sort of similar to, like, really low-level players in Jackie, right? <laughs> like, since the beginning of the game. Just weapon rush, chase around killing everyone. And then they think he'll work higher up, but then people, you know, higher up levels, we know how to avoid that sort of... Uh, the bar issue. for that on Jackie <laughs> versus Bianca was very different, right? Like, Bianca's win rate was crazy, and, like, all the high-level players had, like, ridiculously low win rates on Bianca, which said a lot. I think, like, Bianca had, like, a 40% win rate... But, like, if you took a look at anybody that was, like, a high-level player playing Bianca, it was, like, abysmally low. Like, some of them were even 5% when Bianca came out. And so, like, everyone was confused where this win rate came from. And it was like, oh, it's the low-level lobbies. Win rate... Okay, well, I guess the defin definition of low-level. Because the win rate stuff is all Lion Plus, right? No, so we got to we're... see both the Lion Plus and the regular graph, right? And you can see with the Lion Plus graph, Bianca's win rate went down. Yeah, so, like, I think people could just compare those two and already sort of figure out, you know, where <laughs> where the issue was. Um... I remember people were so mad that Bianca got nerfed. They're like, she's not even viable yet! <laughs> I think people just like gothic waifus. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm pretty sure it's just the goth lolly waifu. Because that's basically why everybody started playing her in Eternal Return. So, I, I could see it being the reason here. Sure. We're going to keep it all about waifus and why people are upset that characters get nerfed. That is totally why. Obviously. Yeah, of course. Happy Hands brought up something earlier saying, uh, anyone have interesting ideas to increase the player base? I mean, I've been working with Bulltrend on this for a while. Uh, they are still doing the advertising campaign. What actually annoys me about their advertising campaigns is that they're only targeting mobile players. Like, that is it. That is their only target. And I'm like, this game is for PC to, like, please mention that somewhere in your advertisements at all. Please. There's also uh, the efforts that's... I, me and a couple other people have been getting into and so like trying to get Eternal Return players to check out this game as that seems to be the biggest avenue for getting people to check out this game is like it's the same characters a lot of the items are the same 
even though all the recipes are different. <laughs> oh, I, I also heard... Started that... doing some similar recipes. They started... Uh, they oh. added liquor bread. It's now rum raisin bread. Soggy bread. But they called it in the thing. They I... called the passion out I... for liquor bread, soggy bread. I still don't understand why they took the image for liquor bread and called it pound cake. Explain. I'm kind of sad they changed it from soggy bread. Kind of fun. Um, they brought in PDP. So like, I mean, the, the thing is, they did have a lot of recipes that are crossovers. It's just then it was changed. Immortal Soul changed the recipe. So like, for example, Commander's Armor, um, the one in Eternal Return is the same as the old one using gold. Yeah. Um, but now, obviously, we're all used to turning into oil cloth, whatever was chain armor, right? That so, was just because of ISBS meta. Yeah. So, I mean, the, not all the recipes are different. I think they're actually trying to implement a lot of them, like soggy bread. That's the yeah, perfect Yeah, I example. noticed that. And it's like, it's actually better for the health of both games if, like, there's more overlap. Because, like, I remember they were, like, really big on trying to get Black Survival players to play Eternal Return. And everyone was like, we don't know the recipes because you changed all of them. I remember on launch of Eternal Return, on their alpha test, we were, like, carrying around two claws and being like, we can't make battle boots? What do you mean? Oh, it's called it's called boot boots. Boot there. Yeah, not battle boots. <laughs> I can't make battle boots. Yeah, and like and then we, I remember we saw the hat again. Like hat is back. Cap is back. Yeah, I mean it's interesting because I guess in a way a lot of players sort of like seeing the differences, right? Because it, it's it keeps it fresh. Fun. Yeah, exactly. It's fun. When you like play out a game and you're like, oh, it's, it's sort of different here, or it, it, it's more useful here compared to there, that kind of thing. Um, but Why does Pond have more than two gemstones? Explain yourself. <sighs> what if I'm in the game? <laughs> Explain. I love, I love gemstones across all BS games. Well, also, it's just like a different meta because you use gemstones for a lot more things. What do you mean? Everybody just makes like three crowns. <laughs> Yeah, see, and uh, I, I assume a couple of Eternal Return players will come in here and check this out. But basically, uh, in the original game, there's a lot of competition over gold. And it's actually the reason why Commander Armor got its recipe changed off of gold. Because if you create, if there was an item that required gold that wasn't drop near or your helmets, it just wouldn't take priority. Because it was so important to have a helmet completed and the easiest helmet to complete needed gold and drop near was stupidly strong and so most people use their gold on that and so there was just a lot of competition for gold and so in order to make commander's arm armor still viable they had to change the recipe i don't think you understand how bad the contest for gold was in isbs you you really don't understand i used to i think oh. Back then, I took, like, each match, I would get, like, almost five gemstones. Because I would make my quiver do the head armor, commander's armor, <laughs> something for my arm if I felt like it. Just, yeah. It, it's, it wasn't a good time trying to get gold or gems um, in general. I, now it's a little better, but it's, it's, still, it's still pretty contested now. <laughs> I'm referring to before they added Hero Helmet and before they added Thick Paper to Gorilla. It was extremely hard to have any helmet at all unless you got gold. <laughs> like, you just would not get a helmet, period. Ever since they added Thick Paper to Gorilla, I've been going for Hero Helmet and OPS a lot more. So that's definitely opened up more options. And they made finishing your helmet actually possible. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, for the longest time, TR of Light was strictly not viable because everybody was running Mammy Root. And so there was just no crosses at Chapel. <laughs> Plus, uh, what was it? Uh, Crusader armor used to counter hands. And so because everyone was running Steel Set, everyone would also contest the crosses. And so like making TR of Light was just super hard. So literally the only option was Banneret or uh, Burgeonet. Nothing else was possible. 
wear a cap all day. <laughs> you, the amount of you people kill that, for armor. <laughs> the amount of people that just don't have helmets. I remember it, it was a meme on one of Nocti's stream where she killed a dog and she got a hat off of it and everyone was just hyped. <laughs> just, just like the co competition to get hat and glasses was insane back then. That's true, that's true. Uh, okay, so you don't know the Mammy Root. The Mammy Root uh, was because Saint's Relic used to give plus one mastery on any weapon craft. It didn't used to be 50% of the mastery gained. And so plus one mastery was a significant difference because you could do this on any thrown weapon. And so what you would do is you would just make a fuck ton of pylums and javelins. And you would also take all the crosses and make a ton of that thrown weapon too. And all of a sudden your SS mastery, while well, everyone is still a B. That was the Mammy route. It got nerfed to hell and back because it caused so many problems. It, it came to the point where people were literally fighting for a chapel. Oh, and also, uh, Veritas, Veritas Luxmea used to give, th I think it was like, what, 3% of your max armor as additional armor? And it was like the best accessory in the game. Why is it called Mammy Root? Because the person that pioneered it, his username was Mammy. And it's spelled like this. Uh, I was not around when Veritas was legendary. I guess nobody here can confirm or deny. Sorry, could you repeat that? I was not around when Veritas was legendary. I was there Veritas? Oh, I was. I was. You were? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about it? I just didn't know that was legendary tier at one point. I did know that uh, Cosmic Watch was legendary tier at one point. It was. Galaxy Veritas Watch. Veritas had a... Yeah, Galaxy Watch. Yeah, Samsung Galaxy Watch. Oh. Galaxy, Galaxy Watch. Watch. I, they they changed a ton of names. I miss Petal Do Pill. That's your I mean, they had to change... They, they changed auto mail and stuff too, right? But then ERBS got auto mail. What do you yeah. mean they couldn't use it? We also lost Statue they, they, of Liberty. We did. It's Statue of... Soteria. S Soteria now. Whatever the heck that is. <laughs> but, um... I mean... Something that changed also, like, competition for crosses. Um, purple aptitude. Ap oh my goodness. Aptitude. Um, <laughs> when, like, people can now just start with the, the bishop's castock already. Or not the bishop's. You mean uh, purple cell. Oh, uh, aptitude. I was like, purple aptitude, you mean accelerate? Yes, purple self, purple self. Oh my goodness, Purple Words. aptitude made me think of accelerate, yes. It was the closest sorry. thing to purple. It's purple, it's close enough, whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like now, it's... it's Netherized R is the a cooler item name than Chimera's Cry. That's true. Uh, where's, where's, this is definitely random, but I want to start involving myself with the community more, but I'm pretty nervous and don't really know where to start, even though I've been playing the game for a bit. Do you have any recommendations? There's a large Twitter community. Uh, most of the Japanese uh, Twitter users will follow you back if you follow them, and they're pretty much a good gateway into it. You can also follow my Twitter. I retweet a lot of art from the community. You can find a lot of artists that way. Uh, on Discord, there's my servers, there's the official server, and there's the community server. You literally just ask anyone, they'll give it to you. Uh, the official server's Discord link is on Reddit. Mine is here. I also have one specifically for Black Survival. As you can see, I, I do a lot of community outreach. Uh, on Facebook, they're starting an English Black Survival group. There's The Thai one is pretty prominent, as well as the Vietnamese one. Uh, I, I honestly just post my memes there in English and they love it, but whatever. <laughs> so there's a few. Just send me a message and I can help you find some of the communities. I'm grabbing the link for that. <laughs> I mean, you can kind of see how I ended up getting the audience that I did. I did a lot of outreach to various different communities. Like, I'm even in the Thai Discord server, and I was like, I, I went into their voice chat once, and they're like, Meow Kaiser, why are you here? You don't speak Thai. And I'm like, I can be wherever the fuck I want to be, bitch. 
And I just started streaming from there. And they VPN'd to North America just to play against me. It was the funniest thing. It was great. Yeah, I mean, to add on to the Twitter community, um, very multicultural. <laughs> there's a lot of... Uh... There's a lot of different, and language isn't too big of an issue, especially if you're into the art community. So I can probably speak more on that side of it. Um, if you're interested in art creation, biggest, so so the thing is, Eternal Return sort of likes to mix up their tags with. Uh, oh my god, it's Mortal annoying Stolt. the heck out of me. <laughs> uh but i mean whatever they're all the same characters we'll take anything we'll eat any food we get you know um good place to start hashtag bs underscore fan art i think that's basically where almost all the fan art goes um if you want to start by either posting your own art retweeting those or checking those out commenting on them most of the artists are pretty friendly they'll respond to you regardless of your language um yeah, so that's most. a good way to sort of... Of course, I'm going to say most. <laughs> no, 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 because I've, I've experienced that. I've been blocked yeah. by a an artist for retweeting and liking their stuff. I think it's less that and it's more... Uh, I won't speak on that. that that's, that's an art community thing. It's something else. But... Um, it, it, <laughs> I mean, like, I've had people Ooh, say that they that don't here. want to be followed publicly. I'm like, okay, and then I just retract my follow. Right? Whatever. But I, I got straight up blocked, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no, uh, sometimes it just has to do with, like, specific content that they want to see or not see. Um, and that that's something on the side. I wouldn't be too scared of um, sharing your art or whatever you create, um, especially on Twitter. Just make sure you add in those hashtags properly so that people can actually find you. You can always post in the discords, um, like across all the discords you want to do. If you have art, post it in the art one. If you have memes, post it in memes. Post it in the official one, post it in the fan one. Post everywhere you want, just to get, the, get your name out there, right? So if you want to get involved, it's, it's not too hard. <laughs> There is We're a small community. We'll all, we'll all start to know you and get to recognize you, and you know. There is a mini yeah. Instagram community, so you can totally post your BS art on there. Just use hashtag Black Survival. It's a very tiny community, and it's I there. want to go post it. If you go there, like all of it is my art. <laughs> There's also my memes. Yeah, it's like seventy percent my art. So yeah, definitely feel free to post on Instagram as well. Um, yeah, I mean, as we already mentioned, you can join Team BS. Uh, you can join the translation team if you really want to get involved. Then you have a second language that you speak. Um, is GM Jan still running that? Right now, uh, GM Jan is temporarily taking it. It's, it's a very confusing thing going on there. I think GM Camille is the one that's sort of running it at the moment. Um, can I cry real quick? Yeah, yeah, go on. Tell me tell me about translation. <laughs> I mean, I'm not part of the translation team, but I've seen some things. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am part of the translation team, so <laughs> um I, I can speak on that. We would we would like help if you want to join. Um definitely definitely consider joining. Um you do get you do get gems for it. Or um what is it called? Experimental mem experiment memories? The the stuff to use to unlock a Glia pass. Um I will warn you if you join the uh translation team, don't treat it as a job. They're not paying you as if it was a job. I've seen way too many people stress out on the translation team, and I have to remind them that it's not their job to do it. It's volunteer work. It's basically volunteer work. Do it if you can. If you can't, it's not a big deal. Oftentimes if a patch goes up and there's funky things going on in there. They can always go back and fix it later. Um, it's not too bad. Like it, it's not it's not that official, I would say. Um, so if you're just interested in contributing to the community a little, helping out a little, definitely consider translation if you can't, you know, contribute in terms of art and other content. Um, yeah, I can't um, think of any other ways at the moment. There's also the other. Uh, <laughs> volunteer work that's being done for the black survival wiki uh there's always they're always looking for help there's i uh, pretty much on ev all of the official discords and the, even the uh fan discord there's a wiki 
channel and you can see everything that you need there in order to get started. They'll teach you how to do it and you can contribute to it. Although I'm still mildly annoyed at the change that they did where like for all the items it's just transparent images. I'm like, this sucks. Cause it looks... A lot of the images when made trans... I mean all the items made transparent, they don't actually look good on thumbnails or anything. I, I can see it being useful in other things, but not for thumbnails. And oh, so yeah. I have to, I have to go on history. I have to go back to like when it's like just the item with like the box and everything. It just looks so much better on YouTube thumbnails. I have to go back and get that for the box as well for my thumbnails. I could do like the glow effect thing, but it doesn't look nearly as good as the box. Kind of useful for artists. <laughs> what did you say? I said it's kind of useful for artists. <laughs> like. I'm just complaining that's from that's my that's perspective. <laughs> I see Plessy has no opinion here. That's because it doesn't affect me whatsoever. You should get into thumbnail creation so you can whine with us. Join our side. Join our cause. Uh, also, ever since they um, started adding like the backgrounds to new skins, new characters it's been a lot harder to make uh transparent images for my thumbnails for like the johan skin from the new pass it took me a bit longer to make it transparent because instead of just being a white background they made it have the oh uh, yeah it's so bad now yeah so <laughs> it takes a bit longer for you to make it yeah. transparent. i get why I... they did it though because it's like showing off the background associated with it it definitely sells the skin better giant. They're trying out something new. I would slightly disagree with you, actually, in terms of selling the skin better, at least from, like, a artistic, like, aesthetic um, perspective. Um, sometimes, like, if you look at the background, it's a very low-quality background that they put there. Like, it's not... I understand that they're trying to keep the focus on the skin, but then it's sort of distracting, in a way. I actually preferred it a lot better when it was either the white or, like, the plain gray. That way you can focus just on the skin and see just the skin, right? Because when you're playing with the skin on, that's not the background you'll have. It's it, it's a strange choice that they've made. Sometimes it works out, but sometimes they make some pretty bad um, decisions on <laughs> which background to put there. Uh, okay, well, we I can agree that like the background could be better, right? But like in general, the field where like, video games are selling skins to make a living, right? They usually do a background. League of Legends does it. Dota does it. Uh, even Hearthstone does it. They do a background. So, I can understand why Nimble Neuron is moving in this direction. And my cat just entered my room. Hi, cat. Hi, hey, cat. Hello, Hello cat. cat. I'll see if I can get him to meow at the mic at some point in the stream. Are we all getting our pets out? <laughs> okay, let me grab the cat, because he went into my closet, and I don't want him in there. Give me a second. Go entertain the stream. Nice. I believe in you guys. Oh no. Yes. If people watch my stream, they're used to my, my dogs barking at me. That's true. Stream. Apollo. Apollo, uh, very vocal. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's a part of the experience, actually. Yeah, yeah. people come nice. just for him. <laughs> Plus, he doesn't have any pets, right? I don't think he does. I, yeah, I don't. So I never had that problem. So you just you have, have to make your own cat noises. What, you, <laughs> what, what pet would what, you get, what, Plus? What did you guys say? I said you just have to make your own cat noises. <laughs> no. Hey, Jen. Hello, Jen. Let's see, I was uh, wondering what pet would you have if you had one? Um, I would definitely have a pet bunny, because I think those bunny. are cute. Cool. That's cute. Yes. I had a pet bunny before, but I had a lot of pets. I had a pet bunny and three guinea pigs, a turtle, and a bunch of fish at the same time. And now I just have one dog and a turtle, but yeah, bunnies are... They're okay. <laughs> They're okay. <laughs> Plus his hopes getting crushed. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, 
it depends. It actually matters if you get like a girl bunny or a boy bunny. They're they're actually a little bit different. Um, they shed a lot of fur. Kind of stinky, but <laughs> most pets have their own issues. But... I got the tum tum. Is that the Please. cat talking or is that me? I don't have my headphones on yet, so I can't hear anybody. Oh, no, Tom Tom, don't escape. Alright, let's, all right, let's continue trash talking him. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Alright, now Did I just have to wait until the cat meows. Know? He's not going to be very happy. You just keep talking. It'll be a while before he meows. He's very patient. Okay. Yeah, but meow, you're listening now. <laughs> Wait, meow, can you take off your headphones? Can you take off your headphones real quick? <laughs> okay, I'll take off my headphones. Gotcha. I don't trust that. I don't trust that. Meow, I don't meow trust is, that <laughs> meow, is a wonderful person. Yeah, meow, meow's great. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm a toxic streamer. What, what, why are you listening? Wait, what? Why, wait, how did you respond? <laughs> Yeah, how you do you realize that I can watch the bot later and this is going to be posted to YouTube? Oh, well then, won't you be surprised when you see it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my cat is being exceptionally patient. I am, like, grabbing his legs and holding them in the air next to the microphone. He's just not meowing. You don't get any of our pets over to talk he, to the mics. He knows what I want. Like, why should we talk? Let's just get them over here. I didn't do it close enough to the mic. Do it again. He's shy. He has performance anxiety. He's like exceptionally quiet. Like you can hear it on, uh, you can't hear it on Discord. You can hear it on the stream though. Oh, well, we're messing up. Yeah. This is a shame. But uh, Chad heard it. It's because yeah, uh, Discord that. has a setting where it tries to block out background noise. I see. I'll have to watch back the VOD then. Yeah. We'll have to watch the VOD just for that. Mark the time. VOD somewhere here. 118. 118. 118 for the cap. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the marker. They want to hear Cat. Now Cat is very disappointed in me. All right. Ooh, I totally forgot to bring this up. Who here has heard this one? Do they allow cross-platform and black survival? Playing on computer is cheating. Uh, Plessy, I know you okay. played on the phone before. Okay, alright. So, I'm gonna say right now, there is no difference. The only difference is the controls, really, and it's really just up to whatever you prefer. So, if you like tapping, tapping the screen, tap, tap, and you don't want to, like, control a mouse or something, then go for it. Now, a lot of people say that PC has an advantage over mobile. And that's just not true. I mean, ever since they removed the rest buffering and stuff, I mean, I know it's possible to rest buffer on mobile too, but if you technically think about it, like, mobile can, like, still rest buffer, because I think they only You, you remove... can still press on it with your tap. It, it's the same concept. Yeah. So, like, technically, mobile has, like, a better advantage for that. But, like, it's basically the same thing. Like, I've played mobile before. Um, I've gotten used to it and stuff. I've gotten used to the controls. I can play pretty decently. But, like, um, you're not gonna, like, get into PC right away if you, like, first start. Like, jumping from mobile to PC is, like, a pretty big jump. Because you have to get used to, like, the hotkeys and stuff. But, I don't know. Just... It's really just up to whatever you are used to. The, There's I, no disadvantages. <laughs> the idea that hotkeys are somehow faster than your fingers being able to reach any point of the screen just comes to show that you're you haven't seen rhythm game players play rhythm game phone games. You can move your fingers really fast across the screen, arguably just That's as fast as hitting hotkeys. 
I, yeah, people who play rhythm games will uh, definitely find mobile a lot more um, accessible, I think. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it has to do with like what games you played before this. And so if you played a lot of games on uh, PC before this, you'll probably find yourself more comfortable with that. And then if you, you really haven't played much PC and you, you probably just play like mobile or, or like rhythm games, uh, you might find yourself more comfortable with mobile. And I actually have a video on my YouTube where there's like a hand cam of me like showing how I like tap and interact with the screen on my phone. So if anyone here is interested in that, that's always on my YouTube channel. You can see like how like fast my fingers move and stuff. You should have posted that to the subreddit. That would have started a very fun conversation. <laughs> is that what Reddit, I, I, Reddit's going on about now these days? Oh, they're always, every couple of weeks, there's always that things like, oh my gosh, they're cross platform I hear this all the time because I moderate it. I, I get to see all the complaints. It, it, it's a fun time. But yeah, definitely post that to the subreddit and I, I, I'm, I'm ready for that war. I am ready to moderate. But I digress. Mm. The, I have... I actually do know people where they played the game both on mobile and on PC, and they said the game runs faster on PC. To which I say, a powerful phone is more expensive than a powerful computer. Right? Just accessibility-wise, you're most likely, if you spent the same amount on your PC as your phone, your PC is going to be able to run the game better, and thus you're going to notice that the game is smoother on your PC. It does not mean you have an advantage. Yeah, that's exactly what happened for me, because I played BS since it's still like season three for me, I think. So back then it was still all mobile, and we all had to learn how to play with it on computer after adjusting. Um, it feels smoother. <laughs> But it's it's just generally what you're used to. Like, I I know there there was a lot of um really top players that were all using mobile, I believe, and somebody was they did it with like a cam every time they were ranking. I can't remember who it was, but I think it was one of the Korean streamers. I don't, I don't remember, but um, yeah, it's just whatever you're used to <laughs> for sure. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome and I forgot back. to unmute myself on stream, so nobody heard what I said except you guys. <laughs> oh, were we just talking to ourselves? No, like, you were talking to me. Right? I, no, when I, when I just came back. Just now. Chat did not hear me. You guys did. Oh. <laughs> we were crazy people. Professional streamer. <laughs> There's still people thinking that I do this for a living. Uh, I make less than minimum wage streaming, just by the way. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to make streaming your, your living. My goodness, whoever wants to do that, best of luck to you. I always tell people this. If I was super serious about streaming as a living, I would be streaming Friday Night Funkin' right now. I can tell you that right now, that's what I would be doing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Immortal Soul would be the target <laughs> community if you want to live off of your... I mean, maybe, but I would probably choose... It would different... require selling merch. It would also require me getting more patri patrons on, like, Patreon and then getting more people to sub consistently. Like, I would have to create a completely different culture around my content where I would have a heavier emphasis on monetization. And I just don't want to do that. Like, if you hop onto, like, Frost Prime stream, for example, right? Like, he has a community where they almost constantly give subs to him. Like, I don't even have to sub to him and I get gifts to the sub. If I'm just watching long enough. Like, people drop tons of money on his stream. And... We need more VTubers now. When are you getting all the VTubers from ER to come here? I'm trying, man. Did, did, have you seen the amount of VTubers I, I have coached? Yeah, yeah. Bring, bring more. Bring more. We need more VTubers. I'll That's try my best. Really bring... You know, whoever was asking that question earlier, how can we get community to be more popular? We need more VTubers. I mean, Nimble Neuron is paying VTubers to stream their <laughs> games. 
No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They paid Hollow Live for Eternal Return. That's right. Twice. And Twice I, got, I got an increase in followers during that time period. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, they streamed like a two hour stream, like a one and a half hour stream each. And, um, yeah, they, they saw results clearly because they got them a second time. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we just need Hollow Live onto. That'll be really awkward, actually. <laughs> The problem with sponsored... all day. <laughs> the problem with sponsor stream with ISBS is just how boring this game is to watch from the from somebody that like is checking this game out for the very first time. Right. I think I think that's what to most people who see it, they're like, "Why are you playing a slideshow?" Basically, you really have to watch. That's what it looks a higher like. Level to delay, play. Like a random person. Yeah, it it just kind of looks like like the because the items are just flashing by them they don't even register it they're just like why is everything just flashing by it's just just constantly like frames at their face and uh yeah no i mean i was playing a slideshow but but like other people <laughs> when you watch high level play they, they can't follow they don't only the people who actually play the game sort of understand what's going on so it makes it very hard for um a potential new player to understand in general, people that have played fighting games and rhythm games are able to notice what's going on with high-level play much faster, right? Like, I remember I was browsing through the categories, you know, just kind of trying to figure out what game I wanted to stream next, right, on Twitch. And then I saw this game, and I hopped onto a Japanese streamer's live stream. I saw the game for the first time. I was like, this game looks cool, and I played it. Pretty much anybody that did what I did right they were like me you know like a rhythm gamer or have played like starcraft or were like used to thinking and seeing things quickly right and so one of the co popular comments is like where i say like oh there's the hammer but like they they, they, they play it in like half speed and they still don't see it <laughs> rhythm gamers are used to being able to read things off of a beat map with very little time to actually look at it that's the reason why. I actually, like, one of the things that I suggested to people that wanted to get faster at this game without playing this game is to try out things like rhythm games and stuff like that. Pineapple pen. Apple pen. Hello? Oh, pen, Hello? pineapple, apple pen. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you All now. right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Sorry. You were trying to talk for a while there, weren't you? My my chat was microwaving, so I think I might have disconnected. Um. What 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 did I miss in terms of pen pineapple it's apple in chat. pen? <laughs> All right. I like how Kazu just doesn't know how to <laughs> process this. Yeah. Have you heard of cool. the game Juby? I will take the silence as a no. But that rhythm game has uh, pineapple pen on it. Like, because of the meme or just for for fun? Both. Like you 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 go to a, a the, the machines in Japan. And you can find that song, and you can play it, and I have a perfect score on it. I'm super proud of myself. Yeah, Juby is the 4x4 four four squares. I'm very proud of myself. I am more proud of that score than any of my scores on, like, the hardest <laughs> songs in that game. I don't care. I gotta bring that item into Isbish. I have posted videos of Juby before, Kino. I like posted three videos in one day. Because I didn't want to space out the Juby videos. I could not be bothered. Okay! Oh, Karain, thanks for the five gift subs. That's awesome, dude. Thanks for the support. And congratulations oh, to anyone who got them. Oh, shit! 
And now we're going to get interrupted wow. by my alert noise. <laughs> Which one did you set as your Oh, I have to unmute the stream real quick. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, the, the alert box is going to... It's going to be Joseph Joestar saying, oh shit, a lot. I used to use the oh. default oh, noise shit. for, like, subs and stuff, but I don't know. I, I like Joseph Joestar too much. Oh. Oh, shit. No, that's fair. I think it's fun to have custom sounds. Everything on that. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Tom Sorcerer did a thing where, like, when he would play Hyun Woo, he would go, Hyun Woo, boop! When he ever, uh, ulted somebody, and that became his, his sub sound. Does he still play it right now? It, he doesn't play Eternal Return, uh, anymore. He, so he takes, uh, streaming very professionally, right? Streaming content creation. <laughs> and he basically was like, uh, Eternal Return is basically a waste of time for him, right? You know, he's yeah. better off looking into doing other kinds of content and seeing if something takes off even harder. So that's what he's doing. Right. That's fair. That's fair. He's literally just like, you know, I'll either make it or I will fail trying to make it. I think you can do well in it, but if you're making it like a full time. Mm. It's difficult. You have to get recognized by the YouTube algorithm. You have to get. I mean, it like there, there's a couple strategies either. you can do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know the streamer Ludwig. He's the number one Twitch streamer right now. And he blew up in the span of two years. Like, that is how quickly he overtook the top. And he has a marketing degree. He is really smart when it comes to marketing. One of the things that he did as a proof that, you know, like, his success was not luck. He made a YouTube channel. He made it a rule that he couldn't use his voice or his face on it. Otherwise, it'll pop off because this is voice on his face. Right? He made a video about another live streamer about how... His background and with the door is is the secret to it, how his stream is so entertaining, right? And then he waited for that specific streamer to have, like, a downtime in his stream where he was, like, looking into the chat for, uh, for content, basically, right? And he gave him a $50 donation with a link to the video saying that he made a video about his channel. So he watched it on the stream. The, the video blew up to, like, so, like 100,000 views. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, that's one way to do it. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of methods, right? But, um... You kind of have to understand, like, ways to get your stuff noticed. And that's where, like, his marketing degree really comes in handy with what he's doing. He knows how to sell his content. Oh. Well. There's still people saving up for my end the stream redemption. Trying to end this all already? Trying to, trying to boo us off the stage? Are you not aware of that channel point redemption? I am. Okay, okay. No, I'm not going to redeem it. <laughs> <laughs> why would I Why would I go down to a stream yet? Yeah. You get so That's embarrassed that you redeem it. <laughs> We're your mods. Why would we do that? Why wouldn't you do that? It would be funny. I can do other things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I see how it is. I see you. No, Kristen. Kristen's just taking a really long blank. Don't, don't, don't look over at that. <laughs> don't look over at that avatar. Kristen's doing his best, as he's just vibing over there. Mm-hmm. Does anyone else agree with the sentiment that this game is actually relatively easy to learn? Mm. Not necessarily to master, but to learn. You mean like the basics and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. A lot of people are avoiding the tutorials and they're avoiding the index, right? And so they're complaining that they can't learn the game. And I'm like, you really really have to look at the index. It's one of those games where, you know, if you don't know crafting recipes or if you don't use set targets religiously, you're going to have a hard time learning the game. The game gives you the tools to learn the game. Please use them. 
remembers yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I would say index is more important than the tutorial. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're not yeah. even doing the tutorial, you're doing yourself no favors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like Mesa said, yeah, it's it's definitely easy to pick up. I would say I wouldn't say it's necessarily easy to become good at it, but yeah. Yeah, I would agree it's easy to learn. Like, you can definitely learn the game to the point where you can understand what I'm doing and how what I'm doing is different from what you're doing in your games. Right? Like, getting to that level isn't hard. Now, being able to replicate what I'm doing, that's another story entirely. Well, for sure, a lot of it comes with um, time, right? Time and practice. <laughs> A lot of people also, I mean, Eternal Return has this problem too. I don't know if I already said this, but a lot of people go into the game and expect to win. And it's like, you're you're facing off against a bunch of other players, which are supposed to be the same skill level. You should be expecting to win that percentage amount of the time. So for Black Survival, it's 10%. For Eternal Return, it's 1 out of 18. Unless... I would argue Eternal Return is harder. <laughs> What's actually funny was like when I started Eternal Return, I won all my games <laughs> until I started getting well, lobbies. Yeah. Of, exactly. Like, That's what people. you say. Like, like early on, yeah, you're going to win all your games. Um, it's, it's not too hard to win that early on. But... I mean, I wasn't like completely oblivious on how to play the game. I had a lot of friends who played um, MOBAs and stuff beforehand, and they definitely picked up the game a lot easier. Um, for somebody who goes from Isvis over to Eternal Return, your Isvis knowledge will, sorry, your immortal soul knowledge will only translate in terms of recognizing the concept of crafting. Um, that's the only thing that I found a lot of the MOBA players were really like struggling with they didn't understand like oh why do i have to craft on the spot that kind of thing um like the crafting recipes things like that that really confused them but as soon as they pick that up they're good to go um and i would say that is like your main advantage as somebody from immortal soul over to eternal return um i, I don't know about vice versa to be honest a lot of Eternal Return players find that their <laughs> skills don't really translate at all to Mortal yeah. Soul. Yeah. Uh, one of the most notable things is, like, one of the questions I get is, like, what food should I make? You know, what food should I skip? I'm like, you're skipping food? Sir? Oh, yeah. Sir, oh, there yeah. are starving food, children food is... in Africa. You, we do not skip food in the, in this world of black survival. No. I mean, we always get that, uh, the nickname of, um, Cooking Mama Simulator in Mortal Soul. Which is very fair. <laughs> I put Dan's face on Cooking Mama once. It was it was great. Oh my god. It drove me nuts. The amount of people that would ask me what food should they skip in this game. I'm like, no. Bad oh, dog. You skip food. Never skip food. Starving children in Africa. I see you two don't have anything to add to this. <laughs> Let me play some Eternal Return. <laughs> I'm dragging I'm, him into the boat right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not really trying to play Eternal Return after. When I was first getting into Black Survival, I hated throw characters because I couldn't get my head around crafting multiple stacks of throw weapons. Uh, why is this a complicated concept? I don't understand. Is it, I mean, like, I can understand being frustrated with the fact that you're wasting so much time doing it. And it's the reason why characters like Emma, where they have an option to go throw or another mastery, it is strictly better to go the other mastery. Right? Like, throw's design used to be that characters that had to go throw had better skills or better stats. And so there was a reward to playing throw. Right? Now, not so much, but, you know, that was the original design. Personally, my biggest issue with throw, and I, I will say right now that it's my worst mastery, but like inventory management on throw is really messy, <laughs> especially for a new player too. 
the inventory management for throw is probably the worst, except maybe traps, but like, it's so hard to grasp, like, how to balance it out, I think, for throw, which is why it's so intimidating for a lot of um, newer players, as in terms of, like, the most difficult mastery. You really have to watch a high-level player play throw to have a grasp of how to approach the mastery, right? There's just a lot of ways to go wrong with it. Uh, one of the advantages that throw has is, well, first off, the powerful skills. So, like, if you're playing Z here, all of a sudden you have access to Zaheer skills, which are extremely powerful in this game. Like, there's very few characters that have skills that powerful. Uh, the second thing is that you get access to uh, Dart of Blood. And before I go on on this, yes, Dart of Blood, Leon specifically is a meme. We'll cover that later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are we, are we going to talk about but, the elephant in the room? <laughs> I knew that, that that was going to be brought up, but I digress. The, the advantage that you have with having the option to go dart of blood is that you can recognize when a player is snowballing really hard and when they're literally the only threat in the lobby, being able to just destroy them out of nowhere is a win condition that you wouldn't otherwise have. Most games, it's probably not correct to make uh, dart of blood. Most of the time, it's going to be co correct to make crimson flower, but just having the option gives you another win condition that you can sometimes go for. Most of my games, like, I kind of, like, hard force it just because it's funny and it's good content. But most of the time, it's not even correct for me to go for that one-shot play. Like, I would have so much more food if I just went Crimson Flowers. Because the amount of inventory space a Dart of Blood takes up is ridiculous. It's the reason why Eagle Owl gets, uh... And, like, other people that, like, make Dart of Blood consistently, they find themselves in situations where if they do not one-shot me, they lose because they just run out of food. Because they spend so much of their inventory space not making food. And so much of the time of the game not making food. Yeah, I think we've all, we've all experienced the Dart of Blood in this group. I think we've all know exactly <laughs> how that feels. Well, I mean, I figured out how to counter it. <laughs> I don't know if you have. Yeah, do, just, do you want I me to break it down early. for you? Yeah, I just kill him early. I'm like, I don't want to deal that, with it. That's not how you do it. I don't know if Christian and Plessy has figured this out. Have you figured out how to deal with Eagle Al? Um, well, I know one way. Thing as you. All right, let's, let's start see. with Christian. What do you do? Right, so... I so one thing that I do is if I get Wick Climb, so if I consider him the only threat in the lobby, I will make Blood Red Hood. So that's one option that I keep in mind. Another one is, yeah, it helps sometimes. And it's also um, makes you make full value if I have any big heals like Crimson and Guild Tuna. Since I always re run Green Cell, that helps as well. And then another thing that I like to do is um, I like to make Acupuncture if there's a new scroll slot. That uses up the needles, and it, it, it's something that like helps me, and also kind of makes needles a little bit more scarce. But the the main focus is that it also gives me food at the same time. Okay, plus he's turn. Okay, here here's here's what I think. If you want to counter Eagle Out or anyone who's going for Dart of Blood, and you know for sure they need ice, just drink all the ice. <laughs> there's five in what well they... and i believe there's two in hotel <laughs> yes you can also destroy elemental bow players that way too Stop it. <laughs> oh, i was trying to avoid that one <laughs> okay so what i do is actually completely different uh if actually interesting enough if eagle Lao is not the threat like if there are multiple threats in the lobby i completely ignore him right because if he dart of bloods me specifically he's throwing the game because there's too many threats, right? The second thing is that Elal always starts school. Always. He... I can get in there and uh, force him to waste some of his crude weapons because uh, he'll usually contest it very hard. It's kind of just the way he plays. And the reason why he plays for his school is because he likes having green weapons early on to kind of just build up mastery to make up for the fact that he's on E+. Plus. Uh... It doesn't matter what character you're playing. He's on E+. Plus. He loses that level 1 trade. Then, after I kick him out of school, I'm in school now. 
I can make battle suit. The I am reducing his burst by 20 damage just by making that one item. And then we also make battle boots. So like if he is if it is literally a 1v1 lobby against me and Eagle Owl, I'm always making battle boots and battle suit. And he's really hard pressed to be able to one shot me. And when I fight him in late game, I'm never taking two hits against him. I'm just attacking him and then I move an area. It's not worth it to give him an opportunity to dart a blood, and he just tends to get whittled down because he has less HP and healing than normal. At some point, he kind of has to just desperation throw it, and then he kind of just dies. I, I don't usually see him as the only threat in the lobby, so I don't always consider him to, like, build a strategy only around him, I guess. <laughs> no, I, I have gotten lobbies where, like, everyone else is, like, so much lower level than the two of us that Eolao is literally my only threat. That's pretty rare. About, <laughs> the thing about having Eolao in my lobby, too, and, like, why I don't really focus too much on him is that most times he doesn't get Tree of Life. So I kind of just don't depend on him getting a Dart of Blood. The thing is, is that, like, I'm now? so consistently stronger than Eagle Lao in most of my games, also just due to the fact that he's playing E plus start, right? That I don't have to work. So, like, excuse me. I forgot exactly what I was going to say, but basically I don't have to ever worry about, like, randomly being weaker than him at any stage of the game, if that makes sense. I mean, it's not fair to just be targeting him for this, right? Like, well, it's because I, I he's the only he's one that does the strategy. One. Yeah, he's the most prominent one that we face at our level. But like, if we're just talking counter um, dart of blood, I think it's still kind of a place <laughs> to to just list him. I don't think. Well, it's also one of the weaknesses of being known for going specifically for dart of blood, right? When you are known specifically for going Dart of Blood, everyone begins to expect it. And that ruins a lot of the power of the option, right? A lot of the people that I've been able to steal games off of when I play throw, a lot of people don't expect the Dart of Blood because I don't force it every game that I get the option to. A lot of times I just go for Crimson Flowers and I play a regular game. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not the most common of them. It's Paths, a, I guess I could say. <laughs> it's a lot scarier when you don't expect the damage coming, because then people start trading against you harder, because they expected a regular game, then all of a sudden they take 180 damage, and then you just take all their food. It is way more powerful of an option when people aren't ready for it. I think the only time Plessy has ever countered me building Dart of Blood was when I was specifically playing Throw Leon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember. I chat was calling you anti fun. <laughs> literally jumping from well and the hotel. I needed my ice you buffer were restricting. Pro Leon, so it was very obvious on what you were going for, and I just had to do something about it. And because I started E plus, I'm just weaker. Yay! I think my favorite thing is just how much stronger hand Leon is. Like, literally just, like, starting one mastery tier higher, how much of a difference that makes. And also just the fact that throw is a weak mastery. I mean, when I started playing the game, I didn't realize Liam wasn't throw. <laughs> <laughs> so I would only play him as throw. I was like, I don't I don't understand what's wrong. Like, why am I losing my matches? I don't, I don't get it. It was only until, like, a lot later that I, someone decided to finally notify me that... He's actually a hand player, a hand character. I was like, oh, you know, this explains a lot in retrospect. I remember how with like Eagle Owl's experience with like playing throw Leon, he, for the longest time, he thought that uh, Leon needed an attack buff, right? To which I showed it was like, you know, if you just played him hands, you would realize that an attack buff on him would just make him absolutely busted. Because he's actually really good. <laughs> he's still really good. Char like, what? one of the powers of, like, characters like Leon and Tia that have low stat attack is that they're consistent. And consistency is power in a lot of games. It's power in Magic the Gathering, it's power in this games. Uh, being able to consistently be strong means that you'll have a consistent win rate. Right? And 
in Magic the Gathering, we call those fair decks. Decks that are just, like, really consistent. They don't do anything too sneaky. They just do the same thing every game. Leon and TR are like that. And playing consistent characters is, is always a really good way of boosting your win rate. Like, on the opposite end of the spectrum, just for example, an argument's sake, uh, there's Luke. Where his power is not consistent at all. It's literally just how many kills do you get. You know, some games you get the absolute nuts and you destroy everyone. The other games you just never get any stacks and you're just like, Welp, I am just a vanilla character that doesn't do anything special. I see you all have no opinions on this matter. Can't, no comment. I can't just comment agree. on that. <laughs> I'm like, I can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. Leon to be pretty consistent as well as Napapon. So I guess I like my consistent characters because those are the two characters that play the most. Yeah, characters that have a lot of free healing are also extremely consistent. Hence, mm -hmm. 11 as well. Yeah. Napapon, if I ever have like a, a really rough game, I know there's at least like a camera or two that I am waiting for me to kind of right. heal me up and put me back into. The frustrating thing about playing consistent characters is that like when you play against somebody that gets the nuts and then you're just like yeah my character doesn't deal enough damage to deal with this <laughs> yeah it happens i understand joker i'm just trying to like not make this podcast all me like if they don't understand that's fine i'm just trying to to encourage more conversation that's all I don't understand a lot of the stats, but then again, I just play characters I think are cute. That is totally a great way to play the game. I agree. <laughs> I played no only Hyunwoo, and then I made fun of anybody that like played only their waifus because I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to call everyone a weeb. There was like look here, meow. <laughs> there, there's there's so many people that like insisted on Put calling my me. Foot down on that. <laughs> they refi They insisted on calling me Nya Kaiser, and I'm like. My username is a mixture of English and German, and you are insisting to put Japanese in there. You weeaboo. I will always bully people for that. I will wasn't, bully you too, Kino. Wasn't there like a player named that though in in this game? Oh, I think it was someone I know, else. I know there was a Neko Kaiser. Yeah, I know, I know there's, there's yeah, there's Neko Kaiser. But like that was like actually his name. He wasn't doing it off of me. What, you mean Neko Kaiser or Nya Kaiser? Neko Kaiser. That player was completely unrelated to me. Oh, I see. Oh. Um, yeah. I didn't know that. He chose the name because that was the name he runs with. I actually ran into another Meow Kaiser on League of Legends that spells his name differently than me. It was quite something. Caesar can be pronounced Kaiser. Interesting. I'm going to keep pronouncing it Caesar. Meow Caesar? Meow Caesar. Meow Caesar. Somebody's going to come up with like the most obscure name where it's going to be Meow Salad and I'm going to get it. Meow <laughs> Meow Salad. It'll be a very obscure joke. That's a JoJo reference. Indeed it is. I love good old seven item slots. <laughs> that, I mean, if you like seven item slots, you'll like JP, I guess. He's got seven too. I see I have killed this conversation. Nice. It's just a moment of uh, contemplation. Reflection on everything. Reflection on all the horrific m things that have happened in All the in memories this of BS. Yeah. <laughs> having flashbacks. Yeah, we're having flashbacks to our experience. Vietnam flashbacks. Oh, the amount of times... Um... Mm -hmm. The amount of times that I, like, try to play JP now, and, like, people are straight up griefing my laptops. 
and I have to play Battle JP. And, like, I have a higher chance of winning on Battle JP than Hack JP, so they're, like, literally sabotaging themselves. It's insane. It's why I yeah. stopped taking Hack JP requests. And, and when you play against the JP... Um... I, I thought you would know since this happened yesterday or two days ago or whatever, but... So sometimes no. you just get people that, um... Oh! You know. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get people that don't know Research Center etiquette. <laughs> You've been playing this game for so long, you don't know Research Center etiquette. You should see when Christian We're and I are... We're this on the podcast! <laughs> You should see when Christian and I are <laughs> handling research center etiquette, or a human being alive, or Plessy. Like, we all, all know research center etiquette. Kaza's over here is like, I don't know what's going on. Why is Meow emoting his location? <laughs> what's going on? Why is he emoting chapel? Stop hitting me, then. If you hit me, I run. I'm skittish. <laughs> then why were you in research center? <laughs> to be fair, Kazu was getting hard bullied while she was in research center, just getting yeah. turreted, getting all of the. She should have left he like years ago. <laughs> like if you didn't want to get turreted, you should have emoted location and then left, and then emoted a location there. You can't. You can't hit someone and then blame them. <laughs> yes, I can. You decided, instead of going for second or third place, you decided, I'm going to take fifth. This was a good That's decision okay by Kazu. Me. Life decisions <laughs> by Kazu. If I, am, if I don't feel like going for second or third place, or even first place, I'm going to choose fifth. Because I hate everyone else. They're all bullies. It's true. <laughs> this is how Kazu copes. I don't think it is a very healthy mindset. Not to cope. <laughs> Kazu wasn't even the strongest player in the lobby and yet she defended it and it's like why her final words was oh if no one's guarding it's not my fault oh it was 100% her fault she just doesn't want to accept responsibility no I straight up was like okay well you know what fine if you're gonna dethrow me and put all that then I don't care I'm leaving and I'm like if we all die to hack it's your fault and then I no it is 100% your <laughs> fault you did zero <laughs> communication there you for whatever no, reason thought that don't hit me. you were don't hit me then. <laughs> I'm gonna slap you Be because I don't want well, you yeah, to listen just... listen listen I don't want I you to be fault. the one guarding the research center I want you to uh, leave I am encouraging you to leave and yet you I... wouldn't listen I left, and then you? we all died. <laughs> you guys left at the same time. I'm trying to sleep. Gotta lower your voice. Okay, close the door, please. Okay. Take off the headset. Stop close screaming. the door, please. Anyways. That's what I was saying. What That's just not research center etiquette. That's not how that is played. If you want fifth place, then play the way Kazu played. But if you want a higher placing, then you play the way anybody else plays. <laughs> There's like guides written on research center etiquette that you have to follow. Emotional gaming is valid. You see, we call that tilt. Yeah, Kino basically said exactly what I was thinking. I was like, you're literally, you were literally in research center until you were almost out of food, which was never correct. I wasn't out of food. I got the food from Dr. Meiji. <laughs> when you left research center, how much food, how much healing did you have? I had two bull intestines, I think first aid kits, and uh, one other food item. Don't remember what it was at this point. And you were claiming to be bullied. I mean, if you're gonna if hit you, me, I don't want to sit there. If you didn't want to take the free hits, you communicate that you're leaving. 
Because as a Barbara player, I will always do that to you. And so it wasn't just you. Then you leave. You you I leave. Read. And you communicate. No, you have to communicate it. You didn't yeah. communicate it. And because you didn't communicate it is the reason why I'm calling you a JP teamer. <laughs> Plessy, do you agree with me? Um, I'm not taking sides. No, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Objectively speaking, would you have played the way Kazu played? Um, well, for starters, the the only thing I would change is to, first off, emote your location just to make sure everyone's on the right page. Just be like, hey. I am going to leave Research Center, so I got to make sure everyone else knows that I am not in Research Center anymore and someone else should take my place. That's that's the first thing. If, if you don't want to keep getting hit or getting turreted, it, it, the, the key thing is to communicate. All and right. Also, if you just have like no food, then why bother? Christian, would you have approached that situation the way Kazu approached it? Oh my god, is this going to be what the podcast is, Meow? Yes, oh I am doing this right now, because it's good I mean, entertainment. I don't think oh. I was watching the full part of the... Okay, so I'm playing Barbara, right? I didn't hold Research Center at first, because I had no food. And I had Ping Chapel to say, I am basically saying I'm not going to guard Research Center. Right. Right. So, eventually Kazu kills Meiji, she takes it. And I'm playing Barbara, I'm going to turret you. Right? So... Kazu's response to getting turreted and getting dethroned and all that stuff was to leave without communicating to anyone that she was leaving. That was her response. And then JP wins. I see. Yeah. Would you have approached that game the same way Kazu did? I would not have, no. Hey, Kazu, both of these players are higher ranking than you. Now. <laughs> oh my god, Here. someone toxic. It's toxic. But listen, there there's what you did was emotional tilt and it's not encouraged. <laughs> I'ma be toxic. <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot there, but I, I had to do it for the chat. Can you forgive me? No. I'll take that as a no. I'm not uh -oh. going to be forgiven. I'm going to have to give her chocolate and flowers. Uh -oh. Kazu, I think Kazu has just left the chat. Kazu is just gone. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> there she is. Oh, She's no. in chat. <laughs> oh, I was making content by being toxic, Fairy Race. That's what was going on. I was like trying really hard to get Kazu to uh, say, like, from an objective standpoint, that her play was going to res result in her having a. Uh, Lower placement than normal. Well, if Kazu's not going to rejoin, I'm going to emergency end the stream then. Because this is not a good feeling. Oh. Unless Kazu I, will forgive me. Are you... Are you threatening me now? That's not a threat. That's more of a, I don't actually know if you are taking this personally or not. I'm okay. <laughs> you promise me you're okay? I'm fine. I just want to get tea. You want to get tea? Okay, awesome. I was like worried that like I had actually like personally hurt you. <laughs> now, how long have we been playing this game? <laughs> I I didn't know you well enough to know if you were continuing a joke or not. <laughs> it's okay. He's used to the suffering. Mm -hmm. Pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. Pain. Pain and suffering. The amount of games that I say that in. So, Kazu, what kind of chocolate would you like? 
Are you getting me chocolate now? Yes. I can hear the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I want dark chocolate. You want dark chocolate. How dark does it have to be? 90% above or nothing. 90% above. Gotcha, gotcha. Does it have to be a specific brand? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Or or, or, or those special uh, sake Kit Kats. <laughs> that might be sake easier. Kit Kats? Ooh, what are those? Yeah. Um, there's like a, in the Japanese store, there's a Kit Kat store. And um, they have all types of flavors. So they have like, uh, there's a sake one. There's um, a rum raisin one. Ah, huh, this is $22. Yeah, there's like a whole box of those kind of things. Is there like a larger set? There's a uh, variety pack. Does that count? I guess it's either a box or a variety pack. It's a nine count. It's, it's okay, I'll just ship ten of them to your has address. A percentage. <laughs> You'll just get like ten of them at your front door. Oh my god, my parents are going to question what's going on here. <laughs> You'll just be like, well, you see, this popular streamer bullied me on stream. My parents don't know what streaming is. I had to explain that to them. It was This popular celebrity time. bullied me in, on camera. Yeah, I don't know. Someone... And this is the this way of asking for forgiveness. It's all good, meow. It's not all good. It's never all good. Not until you receive the Kit Kats. It's not even chocolate anymore, it's torture. Are we talking about the spicy one? Oh, cocoa percent. Okay. No, I, I like really dark chocolate. I like really dark chocolate. I have one that is um 99%. No, I have one that's 100%. I didn't realize that was a thing. But you can get 100% dark chocolate. Which um makes you wonder what else is there besides the cocoa. <laughs> I like both milk and dark chocolate, but I think I would take milk chocolate over dark if I had to. I would also prefer milk chocolate over dark. Okay, but what's your opinion on white chocolate? Uh, chocolate is chocolate. It's okay to have once in a while. I like to keep it interesting, I guess. If I'm feeling different, I would go with white. <laughs> if you're feeling spicy. If I feel spicy, yes. God. <laughs> Excuse me. There's a uh, Russian roulette game with chocolate bullets. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but one of them has like the extremely spicy peppers in it. And so Wait, you just you, you shoot yourself. With you you take turns eating chocolate, the bu chocolate bullets? bullets. You don't oh, shoot you yourself. Eat <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no! This is a racist message. I deleted it. Oh. Yeah, that's not a. Uh... Uh, yeah, but um. Yeah. yeah, I thought you meant like Russian roulette, like legit. Well, it's, it's referring <laughs> to roulette. Russian roulette. Um. I like how, like, as he writes the message, he writes in the message that this message is probably a bad idea. <laughs> you know. Speaking of chocolate, side note, just to bring it back to BS, um, I wish they would kind of do they do they have this in this? I don't think they have it. Um, but like in Eternal Return, Rosie gets a buff whenever she gets chocolate items because of her lore of um. That's an like Eternal Return thing. Right. I wonder. Thing. I wonder if they would ever implement more lore related stuff. It would be cute if they did more Easter eggs. Uh, one of the right. things that I asked them to do in like regards to like reworking Adriana, because right now with Adriana, you almost never use her field skill, right? And so like the obvious change is well, oh, just make it one second and then people will use it. But then I was like, what if you made it so that if she uses arson on every area of the map at least once in a game, she gets a buff, right? And so it would change how she works thematically because then it actually feels like you're playing against an arsonist. A crazy one at that too. That is literally just setting everything on fire. That sounds like a very similar uh, style to like Nathapon's time trail. Nathapon uses it to accelerate to level 18 whereas Adriana would be using it for like an attack buff or something. You see how that would be different? Uh, yeah. Doesn't time trail also give a buff? 
No, time trail gives areas. HP and stamina. And then if you use framing on yeah. in an area that use time trail on, it'll reduce more uh, armor. But it's not like a flat buff, like what I'm proposing Adriana right. would receive. Well, how significant would the buff be? Enough that like you would actually want to play area. this mini game. Yeah, it's it's very similar to to Sylvia's whole like visiting every area. I just think that it would be neater on Adriana, just because like the idea of her field skill is really cool. Just the idea that she's setting the entire area on fire. I kind of hope that um they start implementing a little more of their lore because the closest that they do for that right now is the research journals, right? Yeah. Like. That's that's the closest that we get, but I thought that'd be pretty interesting because they they do it in Eternal Return, like the chocolate buff, and I I think there's another character that has something else in there as well, but maybe maybe not chocolate here, but I think maybe if they could work in some of the characters with a little bit of buff with some items, that'd be pretty cool. I I remember when they tried implementing uh freaking Rio's accuracy mechanic. And immediately I was like, she's not viable unless she does more damage than uh, Isol, Bo Isol specifically, which she didn't on release. It was so bad. Rest in peace, fail not. Rest in peace. They, they literally just <laughs> didn't give her enough stats. And the equation for uh, the armor penetration that she gains on accuracy was so bad. Like, all the accuracy items on her were strictly bait. Yeah. They took away our holy blood bow for that. Pretty much. <laughs> they had a neat idea on her where, like, you would actually have to force a build, but the payoff just wasn't high enough. And then the way they buffed her was just by making her overall stronger. And I'm like, well, that's not interesting. Because right now, Rio doesn't really play any differently than any other bow character. Whereas, like, Nadine has a mini game, Arda has, like, a specific point in the game that he is targeting. Right? And I don't think there's any other solo bows that come to mind. Um... Oh, you mean, like, pure bow? Yeah. No, it's just all here. Yeah. Well, Arda has a little mini game, but I don't... Not mini game, but he's targeting a point in the game. He's targeting the mid game. And, like, I, I explained this on the Eternal Return chat, right? Like, whenever you put up a uh, no digging sign somewhere. It's a dick measuring contest. You as the Arda player are saying, I have the biggest dick on Lumia Island, right? Yeah. And nobody else can contest me. <laughs> and if you don't contest me, I'm going to get free experience and get ahead anyways, because I have a big dick. That is literally what no digging is. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out. <laughs> I mean, listen, I use no digging a lot. I am not afraid to Warm. announce I have a big dick. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Kazu plays enough Arda to know that this is true. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't put up no digging unless you wanna. You're ready to instigate fights. Unless it's the first song. In that case. Whatever. Oh, first song you always like, place it down. Yeah, just just place it down. Whatever. Even if someone contests you, it's fine. <laughs> they they did change the um, like they made it easier, more more popular to use no digging with the lower cooldown. Um. So, it's actually funny has, how many. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. It's actually funny how many newer players will like try to spam it off a cooldown, right? And like it's against me, and I just come over there and I smack them. And it's like, yeah, you just invited me over to the dick measuring contest, and I won it. <laughs> I don't need a taunt emote anymore. I just cast no digging. <laughs> like, I, I never use a taunt. I'm just like, yeah, here we go. Natural taunt. It's basically a taunt, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't understand Arda's skills and how they work. It's actually kind of interesting. Because, like, a lot of people, they'll try to, like, force all gold items. And I, I understand, like, with you, Kazu, you do it because you're greedy. You understand it's not the way to play him. But there's, like, a lot of people that do that because they think that's what you're supposed to do. And it's like, no, he targets the mid-game. Yeah. You just, you do it to get an advantage. You have to rush. Curry, stop 
Stop encouraging people to just spam Adriana on me. <laughs> That's... Adriana's annoying, but it's not... It's Why not would Adriana... Adriana doesn't counter Arda at all. It doesn't. What he means is that he likes to cast Arson in the middle of my no digging. So, it hurts me while I'm doing whatever it is. I mean, I guess that's cute, but no digging has like a short time period. And yeah. like, when you're casting Arson, you're just taking damage. And I'm just going to yep. leave the no digging area because I don't want to take damage. And you're just being annoying and you're setting yourself behind. That's all you're doing. You're giving me mastery. That's exactly what he's encouraging. <laughs> Yeah. He's encouraging being annoying. That's, uh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. If people do that to you in your lobbies, you'll just get further ahead because they're giving you mastery in exchange for the XP you can't get anymore. True. That it's is true. literally what they are doing by entering your area because arson takes a while. You can actually potentially get two hits on them when they try to do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. So you're giving the Arda two hits of mastery in exchange for the EXP he would have gotten from the no digging area. No, they're, they're talking about setting up Arson, not uh, Blaze. Blaze is the combat skill. Arson is the field skill. Yeah, if, if you play that way as Adriana, you are not setting the Arda behind. You are setting the Arda even further ahead, and you're not helping your case. Actually, I want to talk about this. Uh, a lot of the Russian players have this idea that... Uh, if there's like a player that's like particularly ahead and you lose a trade against them that you should uh you should ping the area, right? This is the worst thing you can do in any lobby. When you are in a trade and you are losing a trade against somebody, pinging the area will bring the strongest players to that area. Right? And then whoever is the strongest in the lobby gets stronger. That is what happens. It is the same thing. I think it's just the Russian players. I, I don't think that's fair to just put it on them. There's... I'm only saying it because it's what I've seen. I'm not saying all Russian players. I just said I've seen the some Russian players do that. I should have rephrased that. Yeah, I think there's been an increase of that. Um, I understand I, you want to win. I would argue. I would argue lately. Yeah, for sure. There's been an increase of like when they lose the when they lose a, a trade. And then they just start pinging. Like, Wick, I understand. Pinging Wick, I, 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 I get it. <laughs> but like... No, 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 no. Pinging anything, I, I actually understand the logic. Like, they're trying to win. Right. Here, right? Like, right. I understand you think it helps you win. It actually puts you even further behind. Because, like, in the case of Wickline, the strongest player in the lobby is going to get Wickline now. Now you have an even bigger problem. So, like, if you thought... So, like, let's say that that person that, you, that contested you off of Wickline wasn't actually the strongest person in the lobby. Let's just say, for example. Then the strongest person in the lobby comes in, forces them off of Wickline, and now they have Wickline. You understand how it's how bad that is? It is not just TPC. They're not TPC. doing it to win, though. I, I no. think they're doing it just to annoy that person. No, trust me. It, these are players <laughs> that very much play to win. No, no, I understand that, but usually when they do it, when they're losing a trade, they're, it's not because they think the other person in the trade is um, like the strongest person in the lobby and they want everyone to come in to challenge them. They're, they're sure of doing it because they're annoyed they got kicked out of the area. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I, I mean, that happens a lot less often. I usually, I would actually accuse newer players of doing that, right? But, like, the amount of times that it happens to me specifically, I'm more aware that it's like, no, they're just genuinely afraid of me. Like, they don't want me having the free wick line. They don't want me having uh, docks, for example, because they don't want me having the tuna, right? Like, there's actually, like, a genuine reason for them pinging like that. It's just that it creates a bigger problem for them to deal with later. <laughs> And a lot of times that bigger problem is me because then all, they invite more people to come fight me and then I have even more mastery. So yeah, all, all in all, like pinging in that way actually just puts you even further behind and it puts the strongest player in the lobby even further ahead. So it's like the worst thing you can do. There's a secret society that just wants to counter Meow. Uh, I disagree, but sure. Like, when you run into the same players over and over again, you're going to recognize which players are consistently getting strong, right? So it's the reason why, like, if I queue into Plessy, like, I'll consistently counter his mastery, right? 
if I queue into uh, both Plessy and, like, let's say, uh, who's a strong player but weaker than Plessy? Let's Are say, <laughs> let's say Zia. I, I, I could have said you, but I didn't want to do it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> If I had a choice between countering either Plessy's Mastery or Zia's Mastery, I'm going to choose Plessy's Mastery. Sometimes I might not have a choice, but, you know, if I do have a choice, that's what I'm going to choose. Yeah, that that is the logic, AC HC Casual, but the thing is, is that the more absurdly ahead somebody gets, the more likely they're going to get kills that have food on them because they're dealing so much damage. Mastery feeding is one of the worst things you can do if you want to prevent somebody from getting too far ahead. Like, one of the things that you should be doing and, like, you see it in my games, you know, like, hoarding food, making adrenaline drink, uh, countering their mastery, right? Uh, even making mithril strings. Th these are things you can do in order to offset the advantage they have. Like, the, the thing about the situation that we're describing, 90% of the time, the way you lost was actually, like, way before they even got strong, right? It's either because... Uh, you didn't play as well as you could have, or they got extremely lucky and you lost at that point, right? Like, most of the game is played in the early to mid game. Mo like, I hear a lot of people describe, like, oh, I'm not dealing any damage to the player in final area. You know, what did I do wrong? What do I do at that point? And it's like, well, you lost in, like, the first nine minutes of the game. You did not lose in the last ten minutes of the game. You lost in the la first nine minutes, if that makes sense. Get it. Yeah, we already have a cannibal character. Yeah. He threatened to cook you up and put you into. It no, it, it very much he does make count. You into a, he will make you into a <laughs> dumpling. dumpling. Yeah, dumpling. He, right? he literally says he's going to make you into a dumpling. Yeah. And then there's that one skin, which was apparently called Dumpling Shoe Pie, which makes you really question what's in those dumplings. <laughs> 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 that was entirely on purpose. It semi was. It's a mistranslation. Um, no, nah, it's totally on purpose. But I would give Nimble like... Neuron more c credit than they deserve. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. Not not the translation. Not the translation <laughs> team, please. <laughs> You lose HP to increase attack, so I guess sure. I mean, basically with Shiokai, I'm pretty sure the way he started was they started with a mechanic they wanted to introduce into the game. A character where, like, they would use their HP reserves in order to boost their attack. And so that's probably how Shiokai came to be. Right? Like, there's a lot of ways to approach uh, character design. One of them is to create the characters first. The other way is to create the mechanics you want to put on the character first. Right, I'm pretty sure with Zhukai, they created the mechanics first. Uh, Zhukai, before he had the increased healing on, like, I think it's like currently like 15%. Uh, it used to be that he had drop near passive. Just straight up. Yeah, he turned from a chef to a gourmet. So, like, it's really clear with Zhukai that most likely his mechanics were thought of first before the character, not the other way around. And you can actually see this in a lot of different games where you can tell whether a character was designed by mechanic or if they were designed just by the character first. It's also why a lot of the Eternal Return characters kind of like drop the ball. Because they had the character first, but not the mechanics. And so we see a lot of characters in Eternal Return where their kits don't really reflect who they are as a character. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, Barbara's the worst. Characterization, characterization, eternal return is 
very different than characterization in uh, Immortal Soul. For sure. Um, like, we look at Johan. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Well, I don't know what they did to Johan over there. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Johan's hand was actually just funny to all of us, though. In our game. Johan's my Oh, in our game, yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, he just slaps the the gospel into people. He's a holy man. A very holy man. He's got to slap the Jesus into you. It's great. They didn't bring in, um, they didn't bring in Johan's, um, <laughs> Johan's raging alcoholism into Eternal Return. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that they didn't include a reference to the fact that uh, Barbara modifies her own body. Right? She, yeah, Eternal Return is pretty different in terms of how they characterize their characters. Like, but... you can clearly see that Barbara was very much, took a heavy inspiration off of Heimerdinger. But, like, Heimerdinger is a completely different personality and character than Barbara. So it just kind of doesn't work. I think it's different, though, for them, because they have to work in, into, like... I think they're thinking more in terms of the MOBA mechanics than really how well it fits into their character lore and um, characteristics. But they did, technically, they... If you look inside the Eternal Return files, like the game files, you'll find that they took all the skills and item pictures and stuff from Et Immortal Soul. And it's in the files. They haven't used them. So they even included, like, the thumbnail for, um, what's it called? Injuries and stuff like that as well in Eternal Return. But I'm pretty sure I that's hope for they... testing purposes. Cause that's yeah, but I hope they never bring in injuries in there. But I'm saying, like, they, they brought a lot of the stuff. But I don't think they're... <laughs> So, not translated well from a over. game development perspective, right, uh, it's actually really efficient to take the art you already own and just import it into your next game, right? Because if course. you ever need placeholder art, you just throw it in there. Or, like, if they want to test a mechanic. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all that they have the images from Immortal Soul and Eternal Return. Even if they don't use them. No, no, for sure. Like, obviously, they're not going to redo some of the art for that. But, um, I don't think they're they're thinking to keep it um like you said like barbara's uh what's it called physical alterations i guess you could say i would have like, liked some kind of reference to it there. Yeah, I, I think it's the coolest part of her character not just that she's some kind of genius but she actually like just modifies her own body The fun life choice. <laughs> it makes her a more interesting character, in my opinion, but that's just me. I actually think my favorite thing is when I talk about to Eternal Return content creators how Barbara is played in Immortal Soul and like how her gameplay is so different. And people are just like, why can't she be like this? That in this game? And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure you can think of a million reasons why it would not work in Eternal Return, but it would be cool if it worked. Pretty miserable, actually. <laughs> it would just not work at all in that game. Yeah. Although what would be neat is if she could take extra guns and it would, like, modify her turret skill. That would be neat. Just like a little bonus if you kill a gun character. Oh, like that? Yeah. Oh. I don't think it would work, but it's it's a yeah, thought. Like I, I don't know about that one. <laughs> you would have to balance the character around that, or like make the buff she gets so insignificant that you kind of just do it because it is a buff, but it won't like affect the outcome of the game that much. You go into an area and you have to fight a turret. Oh no, that sounds horrible. Just imagine you walk into an area and you turn return. There's this giant ass turret firing at you. I mean, in Eternal Return, you're essentially fighting her turret. Not really her who's doing the damage. 
I don't think you understand when I say giant ass turret. I mean like the model ten times the size of Barbara. I think that's a different game <laughs> altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I might be, might be playing near or something like that. <laughs> it's a whole Pokemon encounter. Let's go. No one brought up Jan. <laughs> Are we talking about reworking for Eternal Return or Immortal Soul? Because for Eternal Return, Jan is, in my opinion, really well designed. He plays like a mixed martial artist should feel like would be played in Eternal Return. Immortal Soul... Uh, the problem with Jan is that there's really no reason to play him over Nikki. Like, they're too similar. Cool character, can definitely win on him, but like thematically speaking, he doesn't do too much different than Nikki does. And this is kind of the problem that like a lot of Immortal Soul Black survival characters run into is that there's a lot of characters where you're just like, why would I play this character when I can do this character that literally does the same thing but better? It's kind of the problem that like Rio has ran into. Uh, who else has ran into this problem? I'm like trying to think of characters that like are too similar to other characters. Hey, Yagami. My cosplay friend. I follow his Twitter. Or her. I don't actually her. remember her. My bad. Yeah, he cosplays. Actually, yeah. That's one thing I do think in terms of promotion. It's like Eternal Return has nothing in terms of cosplay promotion. Like Eternal, Re sorry, sorry. Immortal Soul has nothing in terms of that. Eternal Return has like cosplay contests and stuff like that. All, all, they're pretty. I think they even had like a stream. You understand that was, like, why that's all a thing. Cosplayers. Sorry. You understand why that's a thing in Eternal Return, not Immortal Soul, right? Yeah, but I kind of wish they would encourage it on our side, too. It's like... literally because they have community managers that actually interact with them. Well, you know, we can always start <laughs> It's gotten to the point where it's like the only... So, the community manager that got assigned to our game... Uh, he's currently busy working on setting up the, uh, the Bull Trend content creation program, which we still don't know what it's about, right? So they're, they're trying to figure those details out. And so it's the reason why we haven't really been able to talk to the, the community manager for Black Survival at all, because he's been busy doing other things. And I'm just sitting here, it's like, okay, we don't get a community manager. Nice. What it feels like. Sure. How doughy Magnus looks in Eternal Return. It's just a different art style. I am not a fan of how the art style in general, but like I can also understand that most of the time you're looking at the characters from above, and so it completely changes how you design characters. You can zoom in. You can kind of zoom in. They created that option now. You can finally zoom in and look at your character closer. Wasn't it, like, a thing that, like, certain items would cause your camera to zoom out? And yeah. that was, like, a stat? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the funniest thing when I first noticed that. There's, there's, there's some... Uh, there's room for improvement. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I sort of wish... Is that still a stat? Um, I think they fixed it. Yeah, I think they fixed most of the camera issues in terms of that. I haven't experienced it lately. Yeah, I remember you would make, uh, I think it was sniping scope or something like that, and it would cause your vision to be extended. They had a while that, I think it was just like a few patches ago, there was some uh, major glitching. Where your character would just sort of like elevator around. Nice. That's the term. For it. Yeah, it was it was powerful. <laughs> like you didn't have to move anymore. You would just transport yourself somewhere. 
But, uh, so you would yeah. have the most insane jukes in the world. You would, like, teleport behind them. In a way. In a way, yes. You would teleport across the whole map, really. But, um... Uh, I juke you so hard, I'm on the other side of the map now. Yeah. Good luck landing seal shots on me. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I played... I hard main support when I was playing League of Legends, so I played a lot of Blitzcrank, and I, I, I remember the days of when, like, people were scripting a lot. And it was the most frustrating thing in the world. Because it was obvious. And then we, I, we had to deal with scripting in this game. Yay! This is my first MOBA. So, I, uh... I have nothing to reference to. <laughs> You've never handled uh, the cheaters in this game? Um, most of the time, I think it's... I, I can't tell the difference between cheating and lag. <laughs> like, my lag. You weren't playing so, when that it, person was, like, really obviously speed hacking as well as map hacking. So that he knew where everyone on the map was. So he would just equip a I knuckle and then just kill everyone on the map because he would attack you in like four or five times yeah. a second. It was pretty bad. They do um monthly cleanses now, right? I think it is it monthly or so they've created a program that can automatically detect it now. And what's funny is that uh one month, it accidentally banned a couple people that weren't cheating. So that was fun. I think I did see that. I saw a few people who were complaining that they got banned and they didn't do anything. And then, like, a few weeks later, come to realize that they were just falsely banned. See, the worst thing about that situation is that, like, from my experience with dealing with people like that, is that, like, 90% of the time that they definitely are lying... Right? Because before they used an automatic program to detect it, they actually had to manually review things. Right? They would check your inputs versus how often it should be. Right? So it would be really obvious if you were speed hacking. But, unfortunately, that was not the case. And so, like, usually I would just be like, look, Nimble Neuron is usually very thorough about this stuff, but this was, like, the one time that they had to reverse the decision because they did the decision automatically. Hey, Plessy, what's Karain's uh, play style? Your play style? Am I supposed to know exactly if that is bad or not? Does he snipe you? And does he, like, um, phony deal you in every area? Like a certain mod? This is a really good mod. I don't see Crane a lot of times, so I'm gonna say no. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I was in that game. Uh, Kazu, just to let you know, uh, my moderator one time sniped one of my games, and then like every time he had phony deal up, he would come into my area and phony deal me because he had my stream up. It was a fun game. Oh, Kazu might be uh, disconnecting because her dad is microwaving again. Ah, uh, okay. Christian! I'll say that I totally meant to say that to you instead. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I like how it looks do you like actually this. know what Karain's talking about? Just genuinely curious. I actually do not know. You actually do Honestly, not know. <laughs> I really do not know, but he's making it sound very sus. He is making this sound very sus, indeed. Am I, am I supposed to know? Is this a one? Dumb C! <laughs> These names! Bruh. The Pursuit. Well, but there's nothing Pursuit. against the rules of pursuiting. Or how you use Pursuit. Oh, you're bringing that. Okay, I know what Crane's talking about now. Does it involve ghosting you? No. Um, that he means not cheating. as in, 
predicting. Yeah, yeah. That's not cheating. It's not, but he's just. He's being dumb. Yes. Like, I do it all the time. I predict where people go. Like, if you're in slums, right, and you leave the area, I, and, like, alley is open, but, like, hotel and uptown aren't, I'm going to check alley for you to see if you're looking for cooking pots. If I don't see you there, I might check lighthouse or school for you because you might be looking for lighters. Right. You know, you, you can realistically predict people, and there are times where you can predict people multiple times in a row. I've done it. Yeah, I've had to, I have that happen to me like one time uh, when I was playing against Dash and literally just followed him like six areas in a row. It was kind of just at random too because I wasn't really actively looking for him. I was kind of just moving around. Like I only... just so happened to do that. I think the only time that like I actively do that, right, is when it's against a uh, a player that has an item I want. <laughs> so like if like I I have like. A bunch of legendary items already and they have one of the ones i'm missing i'm gonna start trying to predict where they're going <laughs> like technically it's something i should do more often because uh in the higher level lobbies doing it against players that you know are really strong and like if you notice that they're weak trying to predict where they're going can be a really easy way to make sure that they're not a problem anymore uh lorem's huh? actually really good at doing that <laughs> Welcome back. How was your microwave Hi. experience? It was great. It was great. What did I miss? Anything important? I think I said something to you, and then I forgot. And I forgot what it was, and then I was like, "So, Christian, I said that to you, right?" And he covered for me. Yeah, no worries. I'm sure I responded appropriately. Very appropriately. Um... <laughs> pursuit without pursuit. Oh, you mean like when people predict where yeah. you go after you run? Yeah, no, you can kind of, you can kind of, you can kind of tell, like, when you look at their items and, like, what they might be doing or trying to finish, you can kind of tell sometimes. I think that just comes with experience, so. Yeah, I was saying how, uh, Lorem does that really well. He's really good at predicting where people go. I mean, Karin, you're doing yourself a bigger toll here. You know, right? You were the one who brought this upon yourself. <laughs> the whole chat's just crazy. Yeah, it's literally just him. He, he He's making a spectacle of himself in front of everyone. Like, everyone was just quiet just to see what the heck he was talking about to see if he was actually cheating. Uh, remember that time when we accused fairies of cheating? Listen, we had a really good reason. The, the the way that was on the stream, the it, there was like there was a clip evidence of just fairy rays attacking Plessy twice in quick succession, right? So we reported it with the clip and everything. They checked the server logs and they found out that Plessy had disconnected from the server at that exact moment. So fairy rays was not cheating. Even though that, yeah. like, Plessy, for, like, the majority of that game had a very stable connection, at that exact moment, he had disconnected specifically from the servers and not from Twitch. Oh, Plessy. It just happens. <laughs> oh, Plessy. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to... What are you doing? Fairy rays of... <laughs> Listen, I was the one that encouraged him to report fairy rays in that situation. How could you do that? Yeah, for I, fairy. Just, like, I don't know. You, the, if the you see something I, like that, you have to report it. I, I just <sighs> assumed... Well, I don't know, because I didn't really see who attacked me the last time. So I wasn't thinking about it too much. and Until, like, I, I looked at the... The, the clip um, is really bad. Walk. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull up the clip. It is extremely bad. Plus he thought like he just got double hit until he was totally. Yeah, I, I didn't say, oh, this person attacked me twice. What is this? I was like, just oh, like, oh, I got, well, hit. I got double hit. Well, yeah, it, it looked like a double hit until you realize it's from the same person. Shouldn't take me too long to find. 
it's literally like my most viewed clip, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I own. I mean, for the right reason. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot that I sent you the profound sadness video. That's a good video. Oh, did I not send you the clip here? Okay, I guess I have to go and look on your Twitch. Interesting. Just just give Blissey another just give the clip another view. Yeah. Why not? Because it's <laughs> it's one of the it, it's not like Wait. we already said that Fairy Rays didn't cheat. It doesn't matter, it's just a clip. Yeah, just give it another view. Why does this matter to you? Me? You're sure making it sound hey, like a magazine. More, hey, more views for me. Yeah, no, I'm saying give him another view. Oh, like... I was totally not understanding what you meant by that. Can we also talk about how I've timed out Plessy three times in my chat? No, those are all. I'm pretty sure it was just like one second time out. All of them were? <laughs> yeah. It's just the thing I do. I just time out people for the dumbest things. I don't even know what I did. Oh, you did nothing. For you to do that. It just randomly did that whenever I showed up or something. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th this clip has 88 views. I'm going to pull it up. Whee! Yeah, mute myself, I guess, if you're showing it on here. I guess I can try to Okay, let's get a lit, sure. I, I, can't, I can't get any. Oh, it's in two times speed, so it's not obvious how bad it looks. Stuff that I need is at hotel. So, boom, hit. boom. Oh, that that's, sure. that was, like, extremely fast. Uh, which one is it? It's not this one. There it is. I found it. I found us. What'd you find? Yeah, like, everyone that, uh, watched that, like, everyone assumed it was hacking. As it turns okay. out, literally <laughs> just Plessy was just lagging at that exact moment. How, how perfectly timed was that disconnect? Yeah. How would you know that it wasn't very disconnecting you? Oh ho ho! Oh ho ho! Oh, oh ho ho! Fairy Rays, master hacker. Maybe Fairy Rays is the reason that I get paid actors in my games. Thonking. I like how nobody is confirming nor denying this. I like Fairy. Fairy's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, she's great. There's a reason why she's been a moderator on my stream for so long. I already said very kind of sus. I don't recall you ever saying this, Karain. Refers back to when Karain says very kind of sus, huh? <laughs> Just start checking all of his messages, see if he's ever said it. No, it's literally like I can see it oh. on the screen. Oh. Like right above, just a little higher yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry in a corner now. Kerr is redeeming himself. I'd also like to mention that <laughs> I've also timed out Karain exactly three times. It's been a magic number. Apparently! Kino has been timed out only two times, so therefore I love Plessy more than Kino. Well, why don't you time out Kino right now? No, Just because wait. I love Plessy more than Kino. What? Then you just have to time out Plessy as well. <laughs> and I will time out Kino for you. You can't do that. Then <laughs> we, we, Kazu um... has been timed out zero times, so guess which mod I love more than her. I'm messing. Like you can actually tell who's in my chat more often just based on how often they get timed out. <laughs> True, I'm very silent. <laughs> you only have three hundred something messages, whereas like all these other people I brought up have already capped out the nine hundred ninety nine. Okay. I think... Actually, I don't know. Bless, do you even have mods in your chat? I actually don't remember. I don't Excuse remember seeing anyone. Me? Do, do you have mods in your chat? Do you not see the chat right now? No, oh. no, Blessy! I said... Oh, me. Oh. You're talking me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, true. Um, 
Yeah, about that. <laughs> well, Kazi, you're one of them. I'm a mod That as is well. true. That is true. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, Plessy only recently started having significantly larger audiences in his stream. So he didn't need more mods back then. I also kind of just didn't know who to give mod to. You give it to the people that, well, one, you trust, and two, have been in your stream a lot, right? Because you want mods that are consistently there. That right. Where, like, be also because you're not paying them, you don't want to, like, give it to people that aren't going to check out your stream otherwise. <laughs> Alright, so don't give it to you or uh, Kazu, got it. We I am in your, stream. Boys in your stream! Hello? Plessy. You were streaming at like 3 a.m. for me and I was there. Listen, just because I don't chat doesn't mean I'm not there lurking. I lurk a lot. I thought you knew this. But, but the bots. Why don't you do something about the bots? I only get them if I see them. I thought you were an active mod. I am. What do you mean on your cat? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but Blessy, don't you want to become famous? But also, Blessie, Blessie, I wanted to make sure you would see it. I think I have like over 15 mods now. Like, just to give you an idea of like the amount of mods you need to be able to cover enough that you don't have to ban all the bots yourself. Right. I can check. Fifteen people watching the other time. <laughs> Cause like there's a lot of reasons why a person will dip out of your stream. Right? For sure. There's a ton of reasons. You know, asking somebody to stay and watch for three, four hours is ridiculous. Absolutely. It's the reason why I hide the viewer count personally. Cause it's there's nothing I can do to keep people from, like, coming and going, right? Other than just be as entertaining as possible. And, like, half of the time when people leave, it's because they have something better to do. Right? Like, I can't blame them for that. Yeah, it's the life of a streamer. Like, I'm the only one that is here for the full p period of the stream. Anybody else that does it is crazy. I'm calling all of you crazy, by the way. You're all crazy. Us? Yeah, because you're here for the whole stream. Oh, uh, yeah. And Wafu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? I feel like Wafu deserves VIP for that. Let's give it to Wafu. Wafu, Wafu shows up on a lot of VS streams. There you go. You're VIP. Oh, I'm unable to add VIP. Why is that? If I remember correctly. Like you watches so many streams, <laughs> even at <Yeah>. work. <laughs> Am I allowed to say this, Wagyu? <laughs> no, no, call him out. He's like, oh, I, I often like go to the washroom and just sit there and watch streams at work. <laughs> like, like you you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't be watching BS streams at work. Yeah, yeah, he watches. This is at work. Yeah, or like while he's like, driving. Yeah, like uh, on in the washroom, and everything. Everywhere. Oh my goodness. Dedication. Well, Wafu is not part of the Diamond Gang yet. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. Uh, let's try again. Okay, now they're VIP. Cool. I like the community. The BS community is nice. The BS community is the worst community ever. Oh, okay. Plus, these community is the best community. Wait, what? I mean, my community is just the BS community. No, it's not. If it was the BS community, you have more viewers. Mine is not the BS community either. You have to recognize that we're, we've kind of harbored our own communities at this point. 
No comment. When you live stream a game, right? Like, sure, a lot of your viewers are part of the BS community, right? But to say that your viewers are the BS community is a bit inaccurate. Your viewers are right. your community at this point. I mean, I, I was joking about that, but, you know, let's keep going. I thought this was a genuine misunderstanding you were having. <laughs> I, I obviously don't have, like, the whole BS community. No, you have the whole entire one. There's no more. No, no, no way. All, uh, what, how much do I get? Like, 15 of them? You sometimes yeah, hit 25 to 30. That's all of BS. There's only 30 people. There's only 30 time. people. Yeah, I only know 30 people. You see, the only me. reason why I have more than 30 is because I'm pulling from the Eternal Return community. That's the only reason. At the mood. <laughs> Miss Leslie, all you need to do is just, every once in a while, mislabel your stream as Eternal Return. And then have people come in and they'd be like, wow, Eternal Return looks kind of funny these days. And you're like, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> and then that's how you'll get your numbers. Can we talk about how I actually did that? I like... Yeah, it yeah. worked. It legit worked. <laughs> I got new yeah, followers for it. More viewers. <laughs> I freaking... Uh, oh my god. So what I did was I made it a vote on my stream about whether or not I should just change the category to Eternal Return. Because... So many people were streaming Eternal Return under the wrong category, under the Black Survival category, which is our category. And so, I did it. I ended up in the top eight streamers for <laughs> the game. And then, I took a screenshot of the fact that I was top eight streamers, and I sent it to Aesop on Twitter. And he was like, are you invading? Well, I would do it more often. I would do it more often, but like, I feel like it would ruin the joke if I did it more often. Do you know Meow is also a god gamer on Rabby Ruby? I did not know it. Please explain more, random viewer. Explain how I am god gamer on Rabby Please Ruby. explain this to me, Kino Eden. <laughs> it's been enough time. You guys want me to switch to it right now? <laughs> People come in and they just see a random podcast. No, you change it to uh, Lumia Island, um, what do they call it over there? Round table. Not what... They call it a round table? They do, and they get all the top players of, like, a specific rep a character. And they all discuss the game, the meta, you know, the health of the game at the moment, updates, etc, etc. Sounds boring. Not messing. They, they represent their own, like, uh, the character they main, I guess. Um, yeah, it's very popular. but uh, It's a neat idea, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I don't know how you would... It doesn't really translate to this game. Works for immortal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how? How? Because like, you could, the only way you could do something similar is to have a person be a representative of each weapon type. But like, we have players in this game that can literally play any character, because the game doesn't work that way. Not a clue. It's I guess not... you would just have a bunch of players in a circle. <laughs> like, that is your round table. They don't need to represent anything. But, yeah, exactly. You know. Yes, I main Jackie because she's hot and that's it. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I main Hyun Woo to make fun of all the people that main girls. I call them simps. I thought you main Hyun Woo because he's like the first character you get or he's like the main character. That actually so was like... not why I main Hyun Woo. I actually genuinely found his skills interesting. Right? Like, I, I get that he had a straightforward game plan. Uh, I, the first stream I watched was a guy playing Hyunwoo at a high level. And so when I p booted up the game and saw that I got Hyunwoo for free, I was like, sweet, I wanted to play this character anyways. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I found out that the character that I saw on stream that I wanted to play, I get for free. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, when I first started, I could not get uh, into playing Hyunwoo. Well, I mean, most of the characters at the time were very simple. Yeah. So it wasn't like we had many options. There was also an eater timer. <laughs> that too. There, there was but a like, channel time to eat food. What, what like annoyed me the most is that they don't say that his brawler skill doesn't work on animals. So I got confused why that didn't work whenever I like punched a dog or something. And I don't heal. I actually never noticed that I never said that. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it says it right now, but I know it definitely did not mention that at all. 
So yeah, that's why I ended up mating Hyun Woo. I genuinely thought the character was cool. Plus he punches dogs confirmed. Well, as an example, I animal can say a abuse. Bird, a bear, a, a, like any animal that does not give you healing. I remember for the longest time I titled my stream uh has has access to guns, katanas and bows, punches people. Hyun Woo, everybody. Hyun Woo? Yeah, you know, you have access to guns, bows, and stuff, and you just punch people. It's fine. I also did that uh, George Takei quote, where I was like, punching bears, gorillas, and people. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my favorite Stoom Tao... Um one you did was when you were playing Linux and like the stream tile was like one fish, two fish or something like that. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Yeah. That that was literally the stream title. This is the Dr. Zeus. <laughs> 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 but it made sense. You were playing the Fisher lady. It was good. Oh, the fish. Fish lady. Oh my god, the person that started that joke has blocked me, and I still don't know why, and I'm not gonna bother about it. Uh Tis a shame. It's one of those classic, uh... I, I have an idea of why, right? But I can't ever be sure, so I'm not gonna comment on it, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those classic, like... Because I'm a content creator, right? They don't view me in the same lens as other people, just because I have an audience. Yeah. There, there are people And like it's that. like, I mean, I, I say this to everyone. If you have a problem with a content creator, and especially if they're as small as me, talk to them. Right? Like, the worst that could happen is that it doesn't go well, and then you really have a good reason to block them. The flip side is that you can resolve whatever issue was there. So it's, it's almost always worth it to just try to talk to them about it. I do sell cat plushies. Okay, I need to catch up with chat. What is going on here? Every time I come back to the stream, Kazu has a different pick. Yeah, it's pretty great. I need to have a sleeping version of uh, my picture so that I can match, but I do not. I get super nervous when Meow's in Discord. See, that's kind of the problem that I've ran into, is that, like, people treat me like some sort of celebrity, and I'm like, I make less than minimum wage doing what I do. Like, it, what I'm doing is not as impressive as you guys are making it out to be. Does that make sense? I am not so big that I don't have time to talk to people. That's not where I am. That's not where the stream is. The chat is not moving so fast that I can't get to know you guys individually. Yeah, Christian has been sleeping for a while. <laughs> it's just a cat meowing and research and while everyone's passed out. So does this mean that I get the hack win then? I'm literally right. trying to avoid having dead air because dead air is the worst I thing know, you can have in a I know. stream. I understand. I know. I We're all streamers. I was trying to keep my sleeping picture on. Is that yeah. why you weren't talking? <laughs> <laughs> you guys like are killing me. Animation. It's, it's just, a nice one. Just, just switch it so both of them are resting. <laughs> I'm gonna make it so that I am forever awake. I am back. forever awake. Oh no! Eyes, eyes wide open. Just dead eyes staring straight into our souls. Exactly. I mean, in all fairness, we've kind of deviated a lot from uh, the podcast. We're talking about black survival. <laughs> Still talk about BS. Well, we're mostly just interacting with chat at this point, which is. I not... mean, that's fair. Seems like me and weekdays, not gonna lie. Oh no. 
Oh no. I've been like trying to get enough sleep because I have to go to I have to do data science boot camp now. And I have to wake up at like 8 a.m., make sure I have enough food, water, coffee, and then I have to sit in front of the computer for nine hours. It's a good time. I'm like BS. <laughs> I do not actually play Black Survival for longer than two to three hours at a time. I can't do it. And I was talking to Nocti about that before, about how, like, we just can't do that anymore. We can't just sit down and play the game for 68 hours. And she was like, we're getting old, meow. We're getting old. We can't play the game that much anymore. I don't know if playing the game for a super long time is an indication of you. <laughs> we're all... <laughs> No, but like if I if I stream Friday Night Funkin', for example, I can easily play that game for like five six hours. It just comes to show that uh, when you do something for so many years, uh, it becomes really difficult to continuously do it. Like there was a point in time where I was literally just living and breathing Black Survival, posting two videos a day, constantly checking the subreddit, Instagram, Twitter, all of that. I enjoy this game a lot. I really do. I I would say I'm similar, but it's because I'm drawing. So I guess in a way I'm living, breathing Black Survival. Because when I'm not playing the game, I have to draw content. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you like stop the game. You have to do other things related to Black Survival. Should've, should've become a doctor or something. <laughs> like, literally every morning, I check the official Discord to see if I need to moderate. It's gotten to that point. And then, like, I also check to see if, uh, they post an announcement. I actually still need to post some of the announcements to the subreddit. Is the Reddit active, by any chance? I, I it don't is. use Reddit, so... It is actually active. We get new posts... Uh, consistently now. There's a reason why people credit me with reviving the subreddit. Last time I checked, it was just all like... <laughs> not not that I have a very accurate um, view of it, but like it was just like people complaining and then memes. <laughs> and that was it. So I wasn't aware it was really active. There's a lot of discussions happening on there. Uh, it's not like... There's multiple posts in a day, but like, there'll be like a new post like every one to three days. Some days we just get a whole bunch of them. Is it the same few people, or have you been seeing some seeing? Um, well, obviously uptick. the people that are have been posting consistently are carrying the subreddit, right? But then of course we get the new people that come in. And plus, right. like, most people that are new that come into the subreddit, they don't create posts. They just comment on posts. That's what most people do on Reddit. And so that's why it's, like, super important that if you want to keep a subreddit alive is that you have to keep uh, post uh, creating new posts. There's, like, uh, some subreddits where, like, they have weekly discussions of the meta, right? Which I, quite frankly, don't want to do because I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that sounds like a nightmare for this game. And I also feel like it would just be a ton of people just insulting each other. And then moderating that is another nightmare. Everyone insulting each other? Is, Yo, do you know is how that much... common? Is that, is that really that common in this? Maybe I'm just like really hermit and removed from the community. You are. <laughs> but I mean like oh God, literally my job is... You don't understand. Like literally my job is to interact with the community. <laughs> that is my job. And so I see all these things. I remember how much drama my stupid tier list made, and then I'm just like, I really don't want to make another one, because then I'll have to diffuse more drama. Tier lists are always a little... People watch them, and then they get upset with you after they watch them. It's like... Yeah, for sure. What did this accomplish? And, like, even the worst part is that if you check, like, to see how many subscribers I gain or lost from that, I actually lose subscribers <laughs> from making tier lists. It's a lose-lose yeah. situation. 
it's just so easy to disagree with those and have your own opinions on them. I think my favorite thing was when I had specified in my definitions of my tier list that I am assuming the best players in the game are playing these characters against each other, right? And that's of course. the only thing that counts for putting yourself higher in that tier list was if you were if you win. Your ability to get the second place doesn't help you in that tier list. And so thus characters like Bianca and Eleven were lower down. Because even though they could get second place very often, they couldn't get first place. And so by definition of the tier list, they had to be lower down. And then somebody goes and comments on there, but Meow, if you play second, you get a good amount of RP. Why aren't they higher in the tier list? I'm like, did you not listen to the start of the video? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking specifically at RP gain, I think that it, would require a different. a different type of... <laughs> it's a completely different tier list. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's... It would you start... also play differently if you're not even trying to, like, <laughs> just trying to ride your way up. It's a different play style altogether, too. Characters that are, like, more consistently strong and that don't tend to not die early would be higher in that tier list. It would be a completely different tier list. And also, it's, like, super important to make assumptions about the types of players playing it. Because if you don't, then your tier list is worthless because then you can say, oh, well, what if X character person is playing X character? They're really good at that character. It just ruins That's the entire point of the tier list. Yeah. yeah. You generally assume skill level the same across for that in order to work a tier list. But I don't know. Is Immortal Souls a little... I don't, I don't know how much help a tier list would be. <laughs> it doesn't help you at all. It's it's why yeah. it's like, I only made it because people were requesting it from the Eternal Return folks. And I was like, you know what? Fine, I'll make it. Right? And yeah. it went exactly how I thought it would go. People got upset over it. Very and it didn't help anybody Eternal get better Return. at the game. It just... I remember when people were, like, throwing a fit over the fact that I put JP all the way at the bottom of the tier list. I'm like, does it really surprise you that I think that, uh, you, you guys know Seven, right? Yes. If Seven was yes. playing JP against Seven playing Rosalio and Seven playing Hyunwoo and Seven playing <laughs> Rotsi and Seven... You get the idea. I'm not going to put my money on Seven playing JP to win that lobby. I just remember that in the in the what's it called statistics that they release the they had to stretch out the chart towards the left because jp was the only one with negative rp gain <laughs> 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 like, that's, that's, that's pretty beautiful yeah it was like you know how they they show the the statistics and they um post them and there's like the all lion plus and then there's expected rp gain and if you look at the very bottom, JP's the only one where the bar is going the other direction, like to the left. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's beautiful. That's really great. I love JP. <laughs> JP is like Important very JP. much necessary for this game. Yeah, he's he's fun. <laughs> uh, actually, that kind of gives me a silly idea. So Korean said, when am I making a waifu tier list? I'm kind of half tempted to make a waifu tier list and then just like Ooh. put oh. all boy characters <laughs> with their faces photoshopped on maids. I mean, <laughs> do you want help? <laughs> if you're down to help uh, me, I, I would love it, but I also commissioned you to do uh, emotes. You did. Oh my gosh, emotes. That Twitch emote thing, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> I have to do my own too, as well as yours. <laughs> Plus I mean, if you have the too. time for it, we can work on that together. It's just that I didn't want to overwork you. It's true. I'm pretty overworked. Uh, <laughs> let, let me let me do one thing at a time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I, like I, are I, you I was, sure I'm you want totally... to do that, meow? You might you might lose a lot of people for that. I I want to do that. I want them to leave. You don't understand. Do you know how many times I have zoomed in on Happy Rosalio's belly and I lose like five to ten viewers? I'm like, good. All my true fans are here now. You leave. You leave. Like some waifu characters on screen for a while you'll notice your numbers go up <laughs> like you don't have to be doing anything you just have to leave it on the screen and you're like oh that's actually a thing and i hate it i hate yeah, it so much i see it i was like oh that's great it's because it's the people that are browsing twitch and they see the thumbnail of the really pretty anime girl because they think it's an anime girl 
I mean, it is, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's Korean. It's different. It's different. I swear. All right. Anyways. But yeah, they see that. They click on it because they're weeaboo. They want to see what's going on, and they see the jiggle physics, and they press follow. <laughs> this is actually a thing that happens. I'm pretty sure that, like, somebody could pro possibly create, a like, a 24-7 stream where it's literally just live to the characters. You just put them in the um, decoration mode, and then you turn on the animation for, like, resting or victory or whatever it is. And then you, um, you walk away, take a nap, and then you come back. <laughs> I'm, like, pretty sure that it would have a good amount of viewers. And then you, like, randomly switch the category to Eternal Return. Just imagine. It's doing all the stuff. I almost want to make a second <laughs> account on Twitch just to do this. Why second? Why not just go all in, meow? I am not doing it on this account because I could get banned. Wasn't there a... I, I heard that somebody who was streaming, um, because we need voice, and the people who check the streams aren't, like, they, they don't always know english so like somebody just put like a podcast in the background and they, they found never out. had to use mic yeah and they got caught but like it went on for quite some time didn't it i did <laughs> yeah I, but it's that's like powerful uh, how stupid do you have to be to think that that would work for a long time you you lose your account yeah i just i just remember hearing that i was like oh man <laughs> i remember when they first uh, reduced how many gems that we could give out to people without a reason, right? Right. And it was all because that p people were selling gems to other players. They were literally selling discount gems. And it got to the point where, like, people were, like, grinding it to the point where they would... Th the reason for the mic rule was because people would just put the game on and they would fall asleep. Th they were literally okay. running a sleeping stream. Like, people would, like, legit I'm just try to abuse the system. I mean, that will always happen, but, yeah, I'm kind of jealous. I wish I could just sleep and get <laughs> Sleeping streams are apparently a thing. They are. They are, but you have to have a certain uh, following, let's just say, before you do that. You can't just... <laughs> Ear-licking ASMR streams. Like, I think my favorite thing about that was, like, Ludwig was talking about it, because he was actually friends with the top streamer that was doing it, Amareth, right? And right. he was like, Amareth is always in my streams. Like, what is going on? Is she, like, just, like, in my chat while she's, like, producing ASMR content? He, he hops over to her stream, and she looks dead in the camera and nods. <laughs> I'm like, bro. <laughs> you gotta support your friends. You gotta support your buddies. It was too funny. Like, she, she's literally so bored of what she does for a living every day that she goes and watches other streams while licking the mic. I'm like, I mean, that's the grind I, mindset right there. You, you'd get pretty tired, too, if that's all you were doing every day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I respect it so much. It's so funny. Oh, um, yeah. Does that mean, uh... We'll be expecting uh, ear licking meow streams. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I made a shit ton of money doing that over doing data science, what do you think I'm going to do? Yes, ASMR streams. We got 12 monitors, why not? True. I don't know, but it, it, it comes to show the problem with uh, how difficult it is to grow as a female streamer on Twitch, right? Because how many female streamers, like top female streamers do you know, where people watch them for their gameplay and their uh, their entertainment value, right? Like there's way more male streamers that do that. And it's not s solely because of the fact that there are more male streamers than there are female streamers. Like that's also part of the reason for the statistical variance there. But the other part is just the fact that it's the type of people that use Twitch. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, I agree. It's just supply demand. That's literally all it is. I mean, <laughs> you can kind of see it. I don't know if there's actually that many um, girl BS streamers, even if we were just looking at a sample size within PS. 
I know that the English community has a larger size of uh, female players than yes. most gaming communities. And not quite sure why that is, but that is true. Uh, what's interesting is that if you check my YouTube statistics, uh, I actually have a decent sized female base. And I actually checked it against my cousin who has a, you know, he does Roblox and he has like, I think he has like 40,000 subscribers. And like his female base is like practically non existent. Roblox. And this is Roblox. Roblox has a decent female audience. Right. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Most of BS it's is like Russian? That is not true. That is 100% not true. The I know we have a sizable Russian community, but I don't know. I wouldn't say most. <laughs> yeah, most of, I mean, if we're going to go on the word of most, it's definitely the Koreans, right? Like, that is 100% undebatable fact, on Twitch at least. That's re a really hard claim. If you're claiming that because when you go and you check, you know, browse and you see a lot of Russian streamers on with, like, hardly any viewers, that doesn't say how many Russian players on Twitch there are, right? It's... You're looking at a very statistically skewed data. It's funny because I studied data science, so I actually understand why this is a bad way to view data. <laughs> it's it actually an extremely bad way to view data. There is a sizable Russian community. They haven't really established any like servers or groups that have like really taken off yet so it's hard to tell just how big they are but they're definitely smaller i'm sorry i mean like servers in discord or discord facebook groups like anything because uh I, I i'm in the russian amino and it's not that big either yeah i didn't i didn't have the impression that it was like they definitely exist and there's Quite a few of them, I think, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them as the majority. Yeah, I would argue that the Russian players are smaller than the, uh, t the Thai players. They're definitely smaller than the Vietnamese players. The Vietnamese players is a very large chunk of the player base. If you take a look at my statistics, you can actually see the most amount of viewers I get are from Vietnam. It's not from the United States. It's not from English-speaking countries. It's from Vietnam. They're a very large part of the community. I've been checked mine every once in a while. I've never checked it. <laughs> Apparently, the Vietnamese community, uh, so they have a Facebook group, right? And they really didn't like somebody, so they doxed him, right? And so, Thanks. when uh, somebody in the Vietnamese BS community thought it would be a good idea to advertise their Facebook group on the on my channel on my youtube comments i told him don't do that you know that is not okay you didn't ask me for permission to do that and you just went and did it and then the guy retaliated by going onto the group and saying that i'm an elitist that i shouldn't do x y or z and like because they had docked somebody before one of my friends in that community was so afraid of me that they had warned me that this had happened i'm like i am mm -hmm. not afraid of them canceling me over me telling them that they can't advertise the group on my comments because if you, like, look through the comments, you can actually see, no, that's not actually a good thing to do. YouTube. You don't advertise stuff on people's YouTube comments. You just don't do that. Yeah. Not I'm... unless it's relevant to the conversation. I don't know how effective that is. I don't think it's that effective, but yeah. Unless it's allowed. Yeah, exactly. You just... It's not a thing you do. I'm actually taking a look I... at like some of these people that I have VIP. I'm like, who are they? I'm gonna check now. <laughs> <laughs> this is bothering me now. This guy has sent 93 messages and I have given them VIP. Oh, it's this guy because they keep spamming drink water in my chat. That's very sweet of them. And then eventually I just gave them VIP. Although they haven't been on here for literally a full year, so I'm going to un-VIP them. Isn't there a limit to the amount of people you can VIP? There is. Yeah. I haven't done it even once. I'm, I'm bad. The limit. <laughs> um, it, the, the limit changes depending on how many uh, followers you have, I believe. Yeah. It's either followers yeah. or subscribers. 
So I have 20. How many do you have, Neo? Uh, I don't know where to check that. <laughs> I see, I see. I, I'm going to just keep clicking on tabs until I find the answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you find out where it is. One day. Where do I find out how many VIP slots I have? I'm Googling this. Oh, it's from completing achievements. How many do oh. you need? Okay, but where do I check? Streams going to unlock more VIP and getting more viewers to chat during the stream. Specifically, you unlock 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 100, 200 unique chatters in the stream will unlock 20, 30, 40. Oh, okay. So it's about how many unique chatters do you get in the stream will unlock more badges. That's right. Pro that's probably under stream summary. Probably. I will find this. This is going to happen. Let us know. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't unlocked the 50 at the same time. So I have whatever's below that. So I have the fourth one. Yeah, I have 50 VIP badges to give out. Wow. Impressive. Which I haven't even used anywhere close to that. <laughs> I mean, I used to think people get them naturally, like if they talk enough, <laughs> they would just get it themselves. Oh, you didn't know how VIP works, did you? No, man, I, <laughs> I'm not a streamer. Okay, so literally all VIP does is that, like, if I turn it on to it's emote... Not fancy badge. <laughs> well, it's the fancy badge, but also they can talk in subscriber-only mode. Oh, I never turn that on. That Neither do sense. I, it's the worst thing you can yeah, turn on. Follower-only mode is yeah. also pretty bad to turn on. I remember I turned it on at one point because I got so sick and tired of the bots. Because it does actually stop the bots. But then the bots started following me, so then there's no point. Yeah, it feels so, so, so dirty. <laughs> there's also the problem that, like, when you turn follower-only mode on, uh, streamers are less likely to raid you because, you know, the, the raid spam is less of a thing. Because not everyone will follow you right away. Mm-hmm. I actually remember somebody came onto my stream and accused me of either view botting or uh, what's it called? Uh, having my stream embedded somewhere on another site, which increased my views because they saw that nobody else on the category had nearly as many viewers as I did. And you're number one right now, aren't you? Like you're usually number one if I remember correctly. Yeah. And I was. Like, well, that's a really absurd complaint. I'm not doing it. And then, like, they accused me. They, they basically said, oh, why are you so defensive about it? You know, they, they, they were playing this childish game. I just banned the guy on the spot. I was like, nah, I could think about banning you or I could just ban you. It was so annoying. I will say, like, you know, like, I really, I guess, what would the word be? Admire, like, the efficiency that you run your stream with. You know what I mean? Like... If there's any issues or you're you're on it like really fast all the time, so like props to you on that one. It's it's one of the biggest mental hills that I had to get over. Right, was just the fact that it's like anybody that isn't making you happy in your chat isn't worth having around. Right, it make you you're just genuinely unhappy. It reflects poorly. Uh, if other people in your chat don't like them, it's it's just creating a bad environment, and it's actually preventing you from growing. It's preventing you from growing your community. You have to weed out the people that are causing problems. You just have to. And unfortunately, it does mean that you have to give a lot of people a cold shoulder. That is just how streaming goes. You're kind of like the gray filter, where you kind of like determine what goes in your community and what doesn't, right? And... Part of the way I do that is actually, I actually do intentionally ignore certain things that people put in my chat, right? Like, I will not read it out loud. <laughs> Kazu changed it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just noticed. <laughs> um. 
Uh, don't read this out loud. It. You know I'm gonna read that out loud. Yeah, because it's your place. It's like you are inviting people to your home. If you don't want them there, you need to have them le leave. I, I know you meant to write leave. Oh, or you don't need them there. You need to have them there. You, you get the point. But yeah, like, I'll ignore certain questions that are either, like, I find particularly annoying or something that has been asked multiple times. And I'm just kind of hoping that somebody in chat answers it for them. Yeah, especially when you end up with, like, a pretty hectic chat. You gotta start picking and choosing. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> to a do. certain degree. It's just unmanageable if you don't. I think my favorite thing is, like, how my chat gets really excited over Kundala, right? And I also am part to blame for this, because, like, I had the whole Kawaii Dala joke. And part of the reason why I started that joke was because for the longest time, people thought that Kundala was a bad accessory. Like, they thought it was so bad that Moonlight Pendant was better. Really? Yeah, people actually thought Moonlight Pendant was better than Kundala, which it wasn't if you did the math. So, you know, I, I made the whole kawaii dala joke, and, like, I made a big thing about, like, always make kundala, even when it wasn't correct. Because, <laughs> you know, you can use a mithril for other things. Right, right. Oh, um, okay, okay. I, I can I see can this see, personally hurting like, you because you play Arda. Yeah, I, I guess that's the, that's, that's the different, you know? <laughs> like, that's a different problem for me altogether, but, like, okay, I can see why they're argue that yeah and people but... love the potato thing it's I, I actually commissioned kazu to do an emote around the whole potato thing that's true i do have to start working <laughs> i'm really hoping that the reference image i gave you is something that is helpful for the final product because i have no idea if it'll look good or not i'll, I'll send you drafts i just I, i'm busy i have a feeling that we're going to have to go through several variations yeah. I just fine. don't it's think fair. my character is going to look good with most of the poses. But we'll see. That's kind of like it the is hard... what it is, right? It's kind of the hard part about like trying to create a brand is you're just like, okay, well, what does my character look good with? Yeah. You're you're that's right. You're um your BR back screen. I never managed to like comment on it. It looks really good. Yeah, I paid... What did you what did you implement that in? I think I paid $200 for this. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it looks great. It I also looks great, asked, like, honestly. I asked for two images, one of them being of Theo on top, right? The other one being the background. And the idea was that I could later commission Theo doing other things in this background. And so, like, oh, you another... Mean, like, a separate layer. You mean, like, another layer is what you're trying to say, right? Okay, so, like, I can literally remove Theo. Yes, yeah. So it's another layer. Yeah. And so, like, another idea that I had would be, like, I don't know, Theo just rummaging through the potatoes or something. But no, I don't want to pay for that use... right now. It's true. <laughs> Art is a... It's expensive. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I spent $200 for that. Uh, I'm lucky I, I, I don't pay anyone. I can do it myself. <laughs> well, I mean, I can afford to pay somebody $200 to do it because I have a good job. But, you know. Like... I'm, if you think of what I do on Twitch as a business, I'm technically operating at a loss. And I'm okay with that. Oh, for sure. I mean, if you're going by hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> like hourly pay. That's... Man, if I had to lose off of Twitch pay right now, I I might, I'd be dead. No, no, I'm, I'm sure. I'd be 100% dead. <laughs> I would not be able to even feed myself. That's my point. Much less yeah, pay rent. Sure. Oh, rent. Oh, man. You're thinking about rent? Think about food. <laughs> like, food, water, I mean, scavenge the land, maybe. Literally, my turning point for deciding whether or not to take streaming super seriously is if I can make enough money to pay rent. Right? Like, I can yeah. use the money from Twitch to pay, like, a couple bills. Which is cool. Like, not a lot of people can claim that. Sure. But it's true. It, it doesn't get me very far. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a tough, um thing to turn into a career <laughs> i mean if it was easy everyone would be doing it oh, there, there would be that's people doing it that don't even enjoy doing it like that that's what it means I mean, if that it happens <laughs> it happens but for different reasons 
It happens because there's people that do it because they think they would like doing it, but then they end up becoming so wildly successful that it doesn't make sense for them to get out of it. That is the thing that happens, and it happens in a lot of fields. Uh, it happens yeah. to doctors, it happens to teachers, it happens for a lot of various reasons. Absolutely. I can't even imagine that happening to artists, but I'd imagine that happens too. It does. <laughs> just imagine you just like, you make so much money making art, and you're just like, I don't like doing this, but it makes so much money, so I gotta make more art. Yeah. No, that... Yeah. <laughs> I can... I can safely say that one. Um... You just end up drawing the same shit over and over again for money. <laughs> just so tired. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Art is the art is the fun. Oh well, I think streaming is as a hobby. Pretty pretty good. <laughs> Actually, I, I think all four of us are probably just doing this as a hobby. Oh yeah. Yeah. Plus, see, remember when we were playing Jackbox? <laughs> And we had that one improv comedy thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure part of the reason why I had an advantage there was because I've actually taken improv classes. I took an improv class. It was extremely short, right? It was not like for college or anything. I took an improv class because I heard that like one of the best ways to make yourself more entertaining on Twitch was to understand how improv works. Mm -hmm. Right? And one of the things that they teach you to do is to never shut down a conversation. Right? And this, it sounds easy on paper, right? Until you realize that you shut down conversations all the time, right? So like, for example, Plessy, let's say you come into my stream and you tell me, it's like, oh, hey, Meow, I just came back from my camping trip, right? I'm going to ask all of you real quick. Uh, Christian, how would you respond to that? Mm. Repeat the... Christian, I just went on a camping trip. I'm in your chat. This is what I write. Uh, I, I just got back. Ask, how did it go? Okay. The first thing. Kazu, what you you would say? Um, probably something similar along those lines. Definitely encourage them to tell you about the camping trip. Ask them how they're. I'm assuming it was a, a day or a week. <laughs> okay. So most people, when put on the spot, when they see that in their chat randomly, they'll just be like, "Oh yeah, that's cool," and they don't ask them a question. They don't continue the conversation. Right? And so that's one of the things that you want to avoid doing. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's not just chat. That's, that's sort of like a everyday social skill, <laughs> you know? I mean, hey, a lot of people are bad at social skills. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, the most common example, and I won't say that this is bad social skills. I think this is actually a very common trap a lot of women fall into, and for good reason, right? Uh... A lot of women are afraid to directly tell me no, right? Like, if I ask, oh, hey, do you want to, like, play a board game with me and my friends? Some of them will, like, really dance around the question. And, like, you can tell that it's because they've been in a situation where saying no would actually get them hurt. But that's another conversation entirely. Social yeah, skills in this economy. I also think it's important for guys to learn how to take a no. That's probably the only girl here. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I decline now all the time. Every time he asks me, hey, do you want to play Puyo? I'm like, nah. Yeah, Blessy has no problem declining people. <laughs> <laughs> Plus he rejects people it's left come, and right. It's come to the point where, like, I won't even... I, I literally will just be messaging him out of the blue. It will have nothing to do with Puyo Puyo Tetris. And he th is like, no. I'm like, I wasn't even going to ask that, but okay. Plus he's prepared. I, I, I just assume. There was one time where he actually did that, and I actually was going to ask him. It was the funniest thing. He knew. He could sense it. I very rarely ask him for things outside of Puyo Puyo Tetris. Me asking him to do this podcast is already something different. Yeah, I was, like, I was really considering saying no, but I, I, I thought it would be, like, fun to join, and I think maybe I can contribute something to it. 
Oh, you can contribute a lot, Plenty. Don't, don't, don't understand. I mean, in all yourself. fairness, we kind of just did this like super impromptu. We probably could have like written more, but you know, we're professional yeah. streamers. Yeah, you know what? What is there to talk about? Right? There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, we yeah, yes, yeah, yes. We wrote Whatever, three bullet Black points. Bible. If we. <laughs> okay, I wrote three bullet points. I was trying to give you guys more credit on stream. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Bless you. Me. Yeah, like, thank you for that. For giving... You know what? Yeah, really each one of us wrote one bullet point. <laughs> <laughs> Except me. Yeah, Meow didn't write anything. He created the document, and then each of us contributed a single bullet point. I mean, technically, I covered all three bullet points. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I mean, is there anything else you want to address? Did you want to maybe talk about... Uh... I wanted to address this elephant in the room. Which one? <laughs> the one that's so many elephants. Right there. I <laughs> way too many elephants. What's going on? The, the particular one that scared the mouse. People sculling again. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had no plan for this, but sure, we can talk about that. People sculling in game. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I actually oh, what, sometimes. What do you mean? What, what's, that, what's that voice, Plessy? What, what did you think it was gonna be? Like outside of game? <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I know, but I'm like thinking about it. Like, I, I'm gonna like speak from personal experience. And any time right. that I do this, which is very rare, like I don't really do this because I think, like, in games where I think I might lose, I still like push forward and like pray, pray for the best of luck, and maybe I have a chance or something. I... But if I know for sure, like, there is no way I'm gonna win this, then I'll just go. Really? If it becomes to the point where it's like becoming a waste of time, there's yeah. that. Uh, there's also if I am like particularly tilting, right? I'd much rather get myself out of that game, take a moment to breathe, because it'll mean that like the way I approach the next game will be better, and so it is actually just better for me to school at that point, from a mental point of view. Granted, you don't get any bear points for schooling. Yeah, I, you know what, like, if I ever have hit that point, I've never sculled, I'll just go into, like, an area, just a random area, and just put my character on resting, leave him resting, and then just walk off, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, whatever place I get, is whatever place I get, but I, I never really skull, I've never considered sculling. Because for all I know, while I'm resting in that position, like, two other people could have died in the meantime. Uh, you know? If nobody ever finds me. And if someone finds me, then whatever. That's that's fine by me. But I, I, I can only think of myself scolding if it's, like, two people left, me and some other guy, and the other guy is just clearly going to win. They have, like, seven, eight kills. They clearly got food passed to them, right? Yeah. And, like, I, because, and like, th they would also have to be a good player, too. Right? Like, they would have to be controlling almost all the animals on the map. If they're not controlling animals on the map, I'm going to still try. Right? There's a number of games that I have on YouTube where, like, the other person just gets fed a shit ton of kills, but then I start controlling animals, I get Wickline, I get Adrenaline Drink, and I just destroy them. Right? That is a thing that I have done. But I have to see an out. Right? If there is no out, then I'm just, like, I feel like I'm wasting time here. I'll see, do you remember the smart bomb game I did with you, and I got far behind? And it ended yes, up okay. Where you now? Yeah. <laughs> this, this smart was bomb. Game. This wasn't yeah. just a normal game, but, like, it was clear that, like, I was leading, like, I was, like, out damaging Christian and stuff, but Christian pulled a very sneaky win by placing a smart bomb in the final area, and we were both duking it out, and I suddenly just, like, stepped on the smart bomb, and then he kills me. So for those of you don't that know, smart bomb, can you cannot step on your own smart bomb. Yeah, correct. Right. That's the one trap. That is the one trap that does that. And, and I had ambushed that game too, so I was able to force it to final area. During the final three, I just kept putting up ambush. Oh my god, you were running ambush? Yeah, it was for the... It was for the um... it was for a Goliath pass, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually got Bianca's uh, Goliath pass skin. And I, I immediately queued up with her and was like, I, I'm ready to lose, boys. Let's go. And then the best part was I was going to win. <laughs> and then I get the most unfortunate turn of events. I love it. 
I I remember I, I was I think I was in that game and yeah you died with so much food. D did you check the vine? How quickly I got hit? Yeah, I saw it. I I just assumed like you were still on like your food timing, so that's how I was able to get away with like that hit or something no just the timing for me being able to hit it and the fact that they uh removed a lot of rest buffering stuff right mm -hmm. actually really slows down uh how that works so i couldn't eat as fast it was pretty funny i was like i did call i was gonna lose that game though did they call and it you it was winnable i just hate I that it was winnable that's what I hate the most about that. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Why'd you call it? Because it's Bianca. You should have. You should have. She is queen of top three for a reason. That's true. Like when I play Bianca, right? If I am in under any mindset of that I'm gonna win or I'm gonna try to win, I'm gonna be severely disappointed because it's Bianca. And if anything, it's super exciting when I do win on her. That's true. One hundred percent win rate after that one game. And that was the thumbnail for the one of your videos. Yeah, I had to do it because she's such a bad character. I was. I remember a disguised toast got criticized for using the one hundred percent win rate on his on a couple of his thumbnails, right? And I was like, you know what? For Bianca, I really want to do it. Something you see every day. How many people can say that they have a 100% win rate on Bianca? Most people do not get a win on Bianca their first time playing her. She's just that bad. I mean, she's got a new skin. It is a very cool looking skin too, and I love it. I hate that yeah. her skins are so good. Her skins like are really skin. good. Like... They're all she really doesn't good. have. They're all good, which is. I mean, some characters could do with better skins. <laughs> We're not gonna name them, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I Let's like his skins, though. Him. Who? You know who? Who? <laughs> you know who? You know who? Come on. You wanna? You wanna? You wanna? You wanna tell us who? We're just not gonna say anything. I'm not responding to this. I'm not falling into I'm this trap. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> this is bait. This is high tier bait. I'm not falling for this bait. Everybody gets great. Yeah, skin. we're definitely talking yes, about Felix. Felix. Oh. Oh, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. All right. If we're talking about Felix. <laughs> I don't know if they'll ever bring us and bring Felix into is the Oh, I'm genuinely questioning if they'll ever bring it to this game. I don't think they will because they advertised him specifically is like the new herbs OC like our own character, you know? It it would Which... I feel like a lot of people would get upset if they introduced Felix into this game. Exactly. I mean I we never know about their decision, but they did say specifically, it's like, oh, this is like an herb character. Although, our own character. In so all fairness, I, I they'll bring him. I would not be surprised if they brought it to this game either, because, like, they already put yeah. a lot of resources into designing the character. Like, one of the best exactly. ways to save money is to just recycle characters. They might bring it to this game. I would just... That's what I feel, too. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought it to this game, but uh, I... I feel like that's a horrible decision. <laughs> I don't think it'll get that much backlash. Uh, now that I think about it harder. I don't know who cares enough. No, it won't get... It's just the way they marketed him. There's not really... I remember when somebody in the ERBS Discord was complaining that Felix got delayed again. And I'm like, welcome to the Immortal Soul Black Survival new character launch dates. Because guess what? When you have to create completely original characters, they take longer. Am I allowed to talk about how art is not an eternal return, but they made an OC yet? <laughs> You're allowed to. They also haven't did Rosalio. Oh yeah, there's a... Mm. So... He is in the game. In ER. 
Oh, he is? Awesome. They're... I haven't noticed. Tia. Not Roselio, Tia. Oh, Tia. Like, the newest yeah, I saw Tia. Is... Yeah. So, like, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I like how they're very insistent that uh, Rosalio is not going to have a popular launch, so they're, like, avoiding him as much as possible. I don't care about Rosalio! <laughs> Listen, you have to understand- you do understand why yeah, I care like about Rosalio. It's not like they're going to bring the happy Rosalio skin over. I feel like if they want to make any money off of Rosalio, they need to bring that skin over. Yes, I agree, but <laughs> they're not going to. <laughs> Listen, only Aesop said he doesn't like that skin. I do not know what Nimble Neuron will do as a company. Aesop is kind of king, at least of the West. Aesop City. is the community manager. Yeah. He doesn't have say past that. Yeah, but who's pushing for Happy Rosalio inside herbs that much? Like, it, Other than the community, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> no, the community is very much has been asking for Happy Rosalio. It's pretty funny. It was to the point where like GM Aesop had to like specifically ban it. That's the reason why yeah. you don't see the discussions about it anymore. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be in the herbs community <laughs> this question they're so chaotic compared to this it's like every time i look over there i'm like oh thank god i'm in mortal soul the amount of times that i come on in there and then i just put into my nina emote with a gun uh, th wasn't there somebody here earlier that had a suo with a gun yeah that was jinx our jinx i'm still supposed to uh coach our jinx that has not happened yet Oh, are they going to play Eternal? I'm sorry. It, uh, 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 <laughs> yes, they're going to play Eternal Return 2. <laughs> yeah, uh, Immortal Soul. They are. They're among the many people that I have tried to network with. Good. Look at you, meow. Drag all of them over here. Just just take the whole... This is a good game, game, too, I swear. Come here, yeah, play the game. Yeah. Drag them over. I it is better than MOBAs, I promise. Immortal Soul greater than... Eternal return. <laughs> you liked that raid message, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, that was great. <laughs> and uh, free on Steam. That's the one thing you always have to advertise. Free on Steam. It is free on Steam. Don't forget it's free on Steam. Wait, yes. did you see Crunchy made a Lukeum emote where it was uh, Luke's face from the trailer, right? And oh. he just put the copium over it. That face is... <laughs> he... A lot of people are like, why does he look like an Ajuma, like a Korean auntie? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, you know what, you're not wrong, but... <laughs> it's all good. Uh, good choice. Yeah. I like how good it looks, though. What, the Luke? Or the trailer? The trailer. <laughs> okay. Uh, I... Yeah, I like how good Luke looks, yes. Yeah, I like... Luke uh... looks fabulous. Yeah, no yeah. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Any promotion? Skip promotion. <laughs> I wish I saved the Luke Yummy emotes. So then I can just throw it onto my stream. You know what? I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it and save it. And it's going to be wonderful. I Because I know I can just look up Luke Yum. There it is. I found it. I gotta save it. Lukium. And I'm gonna throw this directly on the stream so everyone can admire its amazingness. Lukium. You know anything about the Bolt Run program or not at all? Like, I read I it. Know all. I read nothing. up on it. They you know freaking, nothing, right? They yeah. freaking messaged me and they're like, oh, you know, write down what's the next video you're gonna make. And I'm like looking at these questions. I'm like, you guys didn't look at my channel at all. They sent me the same questions. They sent everyone the same questions. I think they're going to personalize it. <laughs> no, it just comes to show that there was zero thought put into this program. Yeah, I was reading the requirements and stuff like that on it. And I, All right, you guys see the Lucium? I'm Lukeum? confused what they're really trying to do. Lucium. <laughs> 
It's great though. <laughs> oh my god. Have you never seen the promotion video? No, I have. The Lukia Momo is pretty great though. This is just gonna be here now. I'm gonna make sure that Crunchy sees this at some point. I don't know why. I like Crunchy's Even username so much time. that whenever he pops into my chat, I'm like, Crunchy. I literally only really like him just because of his username. Other than that, he's just a decent guy. He's going to see me say this about him too, but it's okay. Me liking your, your username is all you need. It's all you need. It's all you need for friendship. I like how Kazu is still changing her picture. Look, I gotta do something with my hand. <laughs> you could draw. I, I, I gotta pay attention, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you encourage me to just walk up and do something else? Okay, but in all seriousness, I actually do really enjoy hanging out with uh, Crunchy on Discord and stuff like that. It's just that the reason why I like hyper fixated on him was because of his username. And I am not sorry. Okay, I'm getting so excited that I'm giving myself a headache. <laughs> Are you... Oh, you don't have a headache. Okay. <laughs> Are you, like, talking to yourself? Or are you talking to us? I could not I tell what you were saying, Kazu. Oh, I'm sorry. I said make sure you stay hydrated. And drink water. I have water right next to me. I am an I have adult. coffee. You are not an it's adult. Like my, what are you talking about? This is like the third coffee. <laughs> you are definitely not an adult. You do not know how to take care of yourself. Oh, good. I actually was drinking uh, sparkling water at one point. Because, like, I, I needed to drink water. But, like, regular water was boring to me. So I just started drinking sparkling water. Imagine saying water is too boring for you. It's too boring. Now I drink Gatorade. Mm. I never get bored of water. That's true. Water's pretty great. I get bored of water. I also drink, like, a lot of soda, though, so there's that. Like, my, my whole thing, justification for it, too, is really funny. I don't, I don't drink alcohol at all, right? I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't do any of that. And so I'm like, let me have my soda. Let me have this one thing. I think it's really funny, too, because, like, uh, I work in the restaurant industry. If you know anything about waiters and stuff like that, a lot of them do drugs. A lot of them do, including the kitchen staff. And a lot of times I'll be, like, ordering, like, expensive meals from there because I can. And people are like, oh, my God, are you rich or something? And I look at them. I was like, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I know where your money is going. And now you can see where my money is going. The waifus. I don't buy live 2D skins. I earn oh, them who buys that? Yeah. Who needs that when you're in Team BS? Join. That's the, great. Join, join the, now. Team BS now. <laughs> join now in the in the description. You put. The oh link. my god! I just realized I have four hours of content to sift through and figure out what to throw onto YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> like uh, 20 minutes worth. <laughs> most of it's not even BS, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to do so much editing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be excited because my avatar is going to keep changing through every <laughs> single <laughs> part. <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. I feel like I should like start zooming in at certain points of like every time like your avatar changes. I just put on the side. I just I have to do that. I have like a counter. Head. Have a counter every time Kazu changes. <laughs> Just like directly above her, it says Kazu has changed avatar this amount of times. <laughs> yeah, well, what's wrong? What's wrong with that? <laughs> I mean, people gotta look at some variety in this, right? And if it's just variety is the spice of life, as they say. Yeah, unfortunately, there's only two L2D artists, so I'm running out of things to use. <laughs> I'm actually yeah. disappointed that I only like one of his live 2Ds. <laughs> It's the professor one. Professor, right? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so cute. It's really cute. I like good. it because when he's sleeping, his glasses are tilted. That's cute. The, the sad part is that Arda doesn't even have a, a gold life 2D skin, or however you say it. He does it matter? Legendary. It's cheaper. 
I mean, what what are the Artemis gonna wail on? Look, fuzzy. <laughs> Right? Listen, Nimble Neuron is doing Kazu a favor. Kazu now has a shit ton of money because she doesn't need to wail on Arda. That's not true. I, I hope this is totally I hope true. I hope you've been saving up. If you don't yeah, need to spend you money on your nice... husband, though, then you clearly have a lot of money, obviously. Wait, yeah, you're using it on this because there's a. Uh, yeah, the next gotcha. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty screwed. <laughs> this is upcoming. Okay. It's, it's not like they're, it's not like I'm totally gonna jinx this. And after this, my collab is gonna be, you know, live to the Arda featured. Oh It'll be fine. God. It'll be okay. Yeah. No, bless you. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I uh, have the credits for this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really prepared for this. I it's still okay. want them to do live to the skins of the base skins. That is something I still want. I want. They'll eventually get there, probably. I want live 2Ds of the animals. I want live 2D base William. Straight up, that is what I want. Because his base skin is the best skin he has. Straight up. I like his past skin a lot. His past skin. Are you talking about the Aglaia skin? Yes. Oh, you said pass. I heard past with a T. Really? Yeah, I like yeah, his Aglaia like past skin, but I don't think it is better than his base skin. So I kind of just like Have switch you... between the two. I, I just use picture William ironically. I don't actually like it. Yeah. I like training. Training is I like okay. Training. I still don't think it's better than his base skin though. Like his base skin is his such base a skin good is pose. really good. I agree. His base skin is really good. I only own Christmas William, which is the L two D. Um I have his wedding skin. <laughs> Ooh, oh. My condolences. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I, I think that's kind of like the problem with William right now is that like you look at the character and you're like why would I ever use any of his skins? It's that has been his problem for the longest time. People are like, oh my god, do you like you have skins for every character, but you don't have a skin for William? It's like I do have a skin for William. It's wedding William. Do you understand why I'm not using a skin on him? I mean, I use Violin Shoichi, just, just I to actually, offend I everyone. I actually don't think Violin Shoichi is that bad of a skin. But oh my god, people were having a meltdown about it on Twitter. It's pretty bad. Like, as an I artist, mean, looking at it, we're like... Mm. I don't think it is better <laughs> than most of his live 2D skins. I will give it that, but I do not think it is a bad skin. That is how I feel about that skin. I'll stay silent on it. <laughs> <laughs> It is a controversial opinion, I know. A lot of my opinions on art is apparently very controversial. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fair. Like, everyone, as long as someone loves this skin, it's fine. It's fine. They need love. <laughs> he needs love. My favorite heart skin is definitely the Aglaia Pass skin. Heart? Heart. Rocker heart. I like Busker. Busker's good too, but I still like Busker Rocker more. Really yeah. It's one of the things where like I, I can Busker's recognize it's a good skin, but I have my preferences. I'm still upset that they haven't yeah. made Cool Kid Hyun Woo into Live 2D. That is true. I really like it, but uh, I don't have I also it, feel but... like Cool Kid Hyun Woo would have weird animations. Just because the pose is weird. It's going to have that weird... um. His shoulders are gonna go back and forth. Yeah, that's the animation they're gonna do to make it match the moving, like when he breathes. So his hands have to, like that one arm that's extended, has to keep moving up and down, which is weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's weird, one hundred percent. It's um, gonna be like with I, the SGM where he like punches the ground. Like victory pose. Yeah, like they're gonna make it so that he bends his elbow probably, um, in order to animate it for L two D. That's what I would. So, um, unless they're super lazy about it, like really lazy on the animation. Some of these animations about... are. <laughs> Can we talk about how much animation went into Yuki's hair and Kendoka? It's like a fucking C. That's a good skin. That's a good skin. Kendoka. Kendoka is a good skin. I like it. But the the live to D animation is definitely hot spring though. It was like hello. What is going on with his hair? There's a breeze. 
the breeze on the <laughs> Looks like it's the ocean, I'm nice telling you. His hair is smooth. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember when I figured out that Captain Lennox, when you tap her, she pulls out a coin out of her boob. And I just lost yep. it. <laughs> I just lost yep. it on stream. I have that too. I was not ready. I mean, it's yeah, a good I, skill. I I saw that for the first time too. I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is clipped. My reaction is clipped. It's I, I don't even like the skin that much. I would literally just get it just for that animation. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, Blessy. On the topic of really <laughs> good animations, hey. Maniac Collector Celine. That animation that is expensive. sick. Oh. It is that... the, one of the most expensive things, but my money it's was so worth expensive. it. Oh, man. The only one that I regret spending on was the Laura one. That one I regretted. I kind of just wanted it just to say that I had live to D Laura. What's wrong with evening dress, Laura? I, I didn't want to spend that kind of money it. on it. That's what's wrong with it. I, it looks so good. I wanted it. I don't even play, like, I don't play anyone but Arda, but the I wanted it. <laughs> is? Is that I like base skin Laura better than evening. Hmm. That was my problem with it. Hmm. That is my problem hmm. with a lot of skins <laughs> is when I like the base skin better. Hmm. I should have just waited for mummy Laura and used my money on that. That's what mummy I should have done. Laura's good. Yeah. Yeah, the default's really good. It, it's I, okay. <laughs> what do you mean it's okay? What? Maybe... Maybe it's because I'm a girl. So when I look at that skin, I'm just kind of like, that's not how they work. <laughs> Are you talking about the belts? Like, I already yeah, know 100%. Sure. Of I already know 100% that, like, everything is wrong about this game, but I like how it looks. And that's all I need. I mean, I, I get it. I Let's, understand. <laughs> listen, people who enjoy very adult things on, uh, BS characters, do you really think they care about reality? Well, I, well, like I said, I love evening dress Laura. I think it's great. And that one's, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I still can't get over that. Like, she keeps her shirt closed with two belts <laughs> around the shirt. <laughs> it looks it's so just uncomfortable. After waiting to happen, but that's not how they work. It looks incredibly uncomfortable. That's not how they work. <laughs> I mean, you could. It's yeah, like she you, has buttons. You can kinda, use the buttons. You can do it. You can do it, but you're, you're, every time you move your arm, you're at high risk of, uh, listen, letting something slip. Listen, like, this is how she gets away as a phantom thief. Yeah, public indecency, that makes sense. Yeah. She's already a phantom thief, do you think she cares about breaking the law? It's true. I mean, she's supposed to be like a Robin Hood type. That's what phantom thief means. It's the same yeah. thing as gentleman thief. The, the term Phantom Thief got popularized by Persona 5, but uh, people mostly use the term Gentleman Thief. That's not true. It got popularized by Tea and Angel. I don't even know what that is. Then that's clearly. <laughs> it was a very popular anime. But, and there we go. And actually, no, you can even argue that it got popularized by... Um, Shoot, what's it called? Detective Conan. Okay, yeah, that I can believe. Mm -hmm. We're going even further back. Yeah. Peace. I've just. I completely forgot about Detective Conan. I never mm -hmm. actually like watched a lot of it. I only watched a little bit because I was selling merch from Detective Conan, so I wanted to know a little bit about the show. There is a Detective Conan town. Um, like the whole town is just dedicated to it. I kind of want to go there. My friend went there. I don't 
I don't remember where it was exactly, lo like which prefecture it was located in, but yeah, yeah. Oh, now I just sound like a weep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> May might be time to end the stream. Yeah. Might be a good note okay. to end the stream, especially because I got classes tomorrow morning. No worries, Mew. I have to. Yeah, I got things too. <laughs> you got an emote to work on. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for stopping by, Christian, Plessy, and Kazu. Uh, you guys should plug yourself in one more time. And so I have a YouTube channel and Twitch. I guess that's the plug. That, that's the plug. I, I have to push here. Click this link. This is, yes, YouTube can click link. You can join here. Don't follow Plessy. Don't follow me. Don't follow me, though. But just, click the just, link. Just, go, just click the link and don't follow. That's all I'm asking for. Dude, clickbait. Like, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I too, also stream on Twitch. Y yep. I guess for the oh. edit, I will be using the first one you guys did. Because it's better than this <laughs> one. <laughs> Wait, this one's, this one's, no, no I was trying to get a better plug to throw onto the video, but I guess I will use the first one. <laughs> Click his link too. <laughs> oh yeah, don't forget to check out, uh, let me, let me pull it up. Yes, this guy. This, this guy. This guy, that's right, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Go, Thank we'll you, Keenel, for the links. Number one, uh... Black survival streamer? Not, Not for long, plus he will overtake me. Nah, I, I learned that Kazu was actually number two. She passed me. That's not true. No, 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 no. You were number two, Plessy. Don't. That's not don't. true. It is true. <laughs> Listen, we have our ups and downs, Plessy. You're going to overtake me. This is going to happen. Uh, according to my, okay, according to my reliable source, Christian Kiger, he said that number one was Meow, number two was Kazu, and number three was me. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, that, that, that's very reliable. That's true. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, Kazu. You are now number two streamer. Someday you will gotta, be number one. I gotta start throwing my tweets. <laughs> 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 oh, God. All right. Well, thank you very much, Meow, for inviting I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for having me. Uh, I see that a lot of people in chat enjoyed this. We might do this again. We'll see. Oh, it's nice to see you like Hopefully that. next time we do something a little bit more organized. Hopefully. Yeah, a little more than <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, a lot of the preparation went on here. I did all the preparation. What are you talking about? We already discussed this. Each of us submitted yeah, one. Yeah, we point. did one bullet yeah, point. I did. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I did none of the preparation. You're right, you're right. Yeah, so there you go. Alright, see you guys later. I'm gonna go find somebody to stream. Oh, should we stream an Eternal Return streamer? What should we do?